No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. And today we have a very, very special episode where I have two of the, at the end of the day, all stars in here to help me interrogate Andrew Schultz. Andrew, I just want to say you've been on the podcast a few times, four or five years ago. It was a while back. And we're, we're very, very amazed and impressed by uh, how far you've taken things since then. Thank so, you, man. Same you, to y'all. You, I love what you, you guys do. You've really doing. managed to take your poop jokes and your abortion jokes and everything and really <laughs> just forward. allow them to propel you to the next level. Super stardom. <laughs> yeah. Super startup. Yeah, so yeah, very, this very is good. Impressed. You're like proud, Tony man. Hawk to me. Thank you, bro. <laughs> Definitely Thank like you. Tony Hawk. This is fine. We're a, not talking, bro. Older <laughs> white man I'm who not is talking to Duno a right now, bro. <laughs> Wait, what, what's your problem with Duno? Cuz, man, he's selling out our community, man. The Mexicans right now are super <laughs> pissed off. Do you know what I mean? Like, I can't I believe that you would support Tyga and his I Caramba. <laughs> Using Tabasco Whoa. sauce. I prepped it, him. Can t- you tell? I know. You, you, you did, yes. we, literally, we literally got you. He hit me this morning. He's like, Doodle's a sellout. Make fun of him. Check out America. Just trans- <laughs> so, no. The only whack part of the song is Tabasco, right? The Tabasco is crazy. If he said Cholula or Tapatio or something like that, then it'd be fine. You know, like a salsa verde there, you feel me? But like, but that don't rhyme. Is, There's only one me? cool sauce. No, but, no, but Tabasco is like, isn't it white people's hot yeah, sauce? Yeah, like, Tabasco is, yeah. yeah. Nobody uses Tabasco. Do you use, you're from New Hampshire. I'll use right? whatever. They what, got ketchup. What if he had filmed I'm a, a rare scene rooster in Chipotle? Name. You're, oh, right, Brewster. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If he had filmed a scene in Chipotle, I think that would have made it's it even Mexican more. Food. Exactly. It would have made it even more clear that I Carumba was meant to sort of lampoon all Spanish Lord, cultures, top, right? Who even? No, no, no the, the song is fire, though. The song is fire. Yeah. No, it's I not. Caramba. Come on, bro. Give me a bar. Glock on the hip, make the op say I caramba. <laughs> yeah, yeah, boy. And I heard it once. I heard it one time. <laughs> that just stuck with me forever, bro. Tiger! Listen, I Take signed up for your OnlyFans, Tiger. Shouts to you. <laughs> you did? Oh, see, that's, that's why y'all do yeah. like yeah. each other, man. No, after the song. Oh, oh okay, okay, yeah. Okay, that's okay, how much support, bro. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as it dropped, it was like Christmas for Adam. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, he had a release yeah, calendar. Yeah. He got a long one. Who? Tiger. Yeah. You got a long schlong on him. Yeah. I haven't looked, I'll be honest with you, but I believe it. Do you know what I mean? It's a decent dick, yeah. yeah. Fuck it, didn't he send you Tiger, a, a picture of Tiger's dick? I don't even remember this shit, man. What I'm sure Tiger, t Rell has plenty. I, I ain't gonna lie. That was, <laughs> <laughs> no, that was the breaking point of me and Adam's friendship where he wanted to test how far he can go with me. The white boy fun. Mm. That, That's what we call it. That mm. was the ending of it. So he yeah. sends this shit, and it's in the morning, I'm in there eating with my kids, yeah. and I look and I say, that's Tiger's dick. I said, bro, yeah, I'll fuck with you, but if you ever see me this shit again, I'm going to have to fuck you out. up. <laughs> you had to rub one out? Bro, shut up. God Is damn it. Is this the nature of your friendship with Charlamagne? You do like gay stuff no, to him? No, but Charlamagne's and just on the gay shit. Yeah, he exactly. likes sus <laughs> humor. Because he's a like, more evolved content creator. AD, we're trying to get him nah, to you're going to be state. doing a gay joke soon. This is like how it works, bro. But you're a little old for it. That's the thing. That's what I'm saying. It's like, um, how do I say it? It's like uh, gay, gay jokes are like first entered the black community with like Ty, what is his name? Tyler the Creator. Tyler's crew. He invented gay. Yeah, I agree. He invented gay for the black people. No, he normalized Justin it Smollett. for black people. White people have been playing around that gay shit for a minute. <laughs> we love gay jokes. That's think, the best I think joke. Adam's bisexual. Has Adam tucked his dick and like sh- just pulled his pants down? I, I have never I show you I'm a mangina? I got a fire mangina. <laughs> no, you never, no, I'll go on, behind the camera and show like you. Elementary. Hey, see, see, you've never done this shit. Y'all two together. Come on, bro. I'm upset with you, man. Because you have to spread our culture more. Me and him are very similar in that we are clearly... We've been, we've been sent by George Soros to be agents of chaos and destruction within the black community and introduce you guys to gay humor. Yes. It's okay. the most fun shit. Okay, I'm going to ask you this then. Yeah. Because him and <clears throat> Said that for fun, they used yeah. to they homies would get around and they'll choke God. each other until, until they, they pass, pass out. out. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Another victory. And then you all rape them and shit. It's fire. Like, it's, <laughs> no, no, no. That's just how you have fun with the boys. Like y'all don't do that. That's oh our gang initiation. No, no, no. <laughs> that shit is crazy. Maybe in prison, but not here. I do. <laughs> so, so we do it when we're free. <laughs> this this has come up. We were just talking about this off camera, but so basically, there's a comedian named Danny Mullen who I'm a big fan of who was on the podcast yeah he's a purple belt in jujitsu <clears throat> and somebody kind of suggested maybe you would use your jujitsu to defeat ad and his reaction was yes i think jujitsu would be an ideal art form with which i could rape ad and ad takes issue with it because again he doesn't understand white boy humor he doesn't want to get raped i didn't even take issue with it now that i know what type of guy he is mm-hmm. like yeah. if that was our first interaction then i wouldn't know how to handle that but wait is he cute like 
Yes. <laughs> like, it's like that it's Lloyd, a decent looking guy. Well, he's got a Lloyd Christmas haircut. He, he said Lloyd I was Chris- beautiful. So he, okay. I was like, hey. That's a compliment. I mean, you'd rather choke out a more beautiful dude. Right? Do you think that would be a stain on the history of jujitsu if you found out the, that the old masters were primarily using it to rape their friends? Well, that would be a case. Yes, Adam. <laughs> I, do, I do think that would be a stain on jujitsu. Mm. Yes. I'll throw my gi away. I hope you never find that out about the Gracie family. That would be really a stain on the whole UFC as well. Yeah. Oh, you're doing jujitsu? A little bit. Really? More, more boxing, though. But he's okay, scared yeah. to roll around with me because he thinks I'm going to get a boner. Yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, jujitsu is wild gay. Mm. <laughs> like, it, it, when you think about it, like, it's self defense like, gay. The guy like welcomes you, and it's missionary gay. That's the gayest gay. Yeah, you're laying. Like my teacher back. says, get on yeah, the ground. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, get like, on top of me. I'm like, hold on, man. Like if you hit a dude from the back, that's not as gay as like looking into his eyes. <laughs> like, oh I mean, like that's. But you have to do that wild, too. You spend like, more time nah, facing the guy oh, than crazy, taking bro. their back. Nah, that, isn't that crazy? Yeah, but like the, a dude puts his legs up and you just got it. The thing is, when you do when you're doing <laughs> jujitsu, I'm tapping out when he puts his legs up. You're so worried about getting choked out or beat up or whatever that the last thing you're gonna think of is like, oh well, we both have penises. Yeah, you but know? then after that, you would do that. You do. You're all sweaty. I, I gave a guy a staph infection within my first couple weeks of doing jujitsu. You're smelling you jujitsu a little bit, you know. Why well, do you guys that's disgusting. Don't, don't you know. do porn? Yeah. Don't you guys get tested every week or whatever? This is before all the porn stuff. This is like 10, you don't like 11 shower. years you ago. Don't, you, oh, you're really on some white shit. I like, try yeah. to avoid showering if I if I can. Yeah. yeah. You? That is a, no, I like showering, bro. Yeah. No, I, yeah. Shower, <laughs> I shower before I come <laughs> on camera. <laughs> but, Adam just met black people. I can tell. Like in the last five years, like I grew up with black people, so I had to shower. Oh, did you? I, I learned very early that I'm supposed to like wash my ass with a towel in the shower. Most white people, you don't even they know. They just taught me that. that. They <laughs> just taught me about the loofah. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy, bro? Dad asked, AD is one of the biggest causes of me having a clean ball sack because he introduced me to the loofah. That is crazy. Now though. I the, use it every day. The fact that he used just put soap and do this. Yeah. 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 No, he said it. he had one green Irish, uh, uh, yes. Irish spring. And he would just lather himself with it and just jump out. And now yeah. I have a bottle of Method Men and a loofah. And a loofah. You don't know about Method Man? No, what's Method Man? It's a pretty poppin' uh, body soap that you can get from Target. You don't just fucking use fucking head and shoulders? You guys are clowning me for using Irish Spring, and now you're suggesting a transition Irish to Irish... Irish stinks. No, it's good. No, That's Irish good Spring shit. is kind of good, bro. Yeah, yeah, what do yeah, you yeah. use? Vidal Sassoon? Duh. So, <laughs> <laughs> I like to do Dove body wash. <laughs> being there. Mm, 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 mm. You play that song when you get in the shower. Put it on repeat. <laughs> Idiot. Yeah. Or the rubber ducky. You're the one. Oh, yeah, but that's a bath time anthem. And so you shower to white people music? <laughs> okay. So. I Carumba, man. This is, yeah, I Carumba. Let's talk more about that. I can't oh, believe you don't think dude, the song is right. three podcasts what about in a row. American Cholo coming after you. Shout out to American Cholo. Yo, yeah, shout out to American guy. Cholo. He made his name off of you. Who did? That's my favorite podcast. We've talked about him so much on here as a result of you just earning his ire. Yeah. I mean, we had a conversation. He actually He's a great me this guy, morning. you vulture. Yeah. Yeah. I like him. Yeah, but we actually had a conversation this morning. He's going to be a consultant on the next Taiga Mexican video. Yeah. Probably. He's probably going to have a, a cameo. You're really just trying to put this to bed, though. You don't like how we keep talking about it, huh? I mean, shit, like, fool, I'm not going to get around. So, you feel me? <laughs> like, bro, they're still mad. Like, like, like I'm just like, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> like, I'm like, damn. Like, I say my opinion, and then everybody's like, ah, right, you don't respect our people. Right. And then yesterday, I, I fucking, you feel me? I made grave out of points, and then everybody's still like, well, you didn't, he still didn't talk about the song. I'm like, we did talk about the song. We don't fucking like it. It's disrespectful. Okay. You're All not right. used to having the heat on you like that. I mean, I really don't. You feel me? I don't be used to this. Andrew, mm-hmm. do you think that Duno should start identifying as Latinx? You are Latinx. I'm not Latinx. <laughs> yes. You are. No, that's bullshit. Because when, when we were doing the movie together, you were very Hollywood. You were like, no. Mm. You did. No, 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 bro. Sell out. I did. I, what I did like, I do? This is my boy. I was like, yo, this is my boy Duno. And I was introducing you. And you're like, yo, you don't know how I identify. Like, you you did. You, <laughs> <laughs> yo, 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 son. Well, you did. Well, he found out he's what? 2% African now? 3% African. Let's go, He's Nigerian. Bro. Wait, you're Nigerian? 
I think it was like West African. I don't know. Maybe Nigeria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's not what happened at the movie set. No, remember? Uh, you, you no, were like, I walked in the bus and he was like, Andrew, nice to meet you. Yeah. And I, I, was like, I did say that. But like, like, you know, oh, we were shit. both proper. But yeah. you were all about that life. Say but, again? But you were keeping it professional. But yeah. see, okay, Andrew was so sure that you were an industry plant and not really from the streets that when I told him... That Jesus you Christ. are I didn't know with you were the business. I, I just didn't know you were with the business. He couldn't believe it. I was like, there's yeah. no way. No, because when I pulled up on you, I was fucking around with some like, <laughs> do you remember what I was saying? Yeah. Yeah, and I didn't know that you were with the, I don't know how much gang shit I could talk about on the air. Whatever you want. Motherfuckers yeah. be getting so sensitive and running up on no, you. No, that's cool. Uh, shout to Milk. Oh, you know I mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Shout out to my favorite YouTuber, oh Milk my God. Gang. Shout out to Milk Gang, my favorite YouTuber. They hating on y'all, okay? I fuck with you, Milk. And 1090 Jake, whatever that is. That makes sense that you, you would like I mean? him, though, because he is essentially a comedian as well. Now, he's funny, bro. Milk. Oh. He's more oh, of a comedian. Oh, you know? oh my God. That, that motherfucker's yeah, funny, bro. I just keep the fire rolling. No, I, and, and, for you know what's crazy? Today I got comments like, man, you let Andrew say wet back jokes, and I'm like, Oh, oh my! Bro, I had a fire hey, joke. You're Mexican. No, 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 no. We I'm can not say Mexican. that. <laughs> but I had a fire joke that I didn't say in the movie. It was three of them, and they were just letting me riff. So I like walk in the scene, and there's like three Mexican yeah. dudes, and like I was just saying, "Hey, what's up, case of dildos or whatever." I was just like saying, <laughs> I was "You just say hella funny shit." That shit was funny. We just riffing. I had yeah. one, but I was like, "Now nah, they're gonna cut it." But I, I wanted to walk up to be. Like, I wanted to say, "Who are you guys? The wet Backstreet Boys?" <laughs> <laughs> But everybody's That's like, bar, bro. that shit was fun. No, no. Because when he said it, I was like, oh my God, that shit would have been funny. But then um, the director was like, yeah, we would have not put that in there either There's way. No way. You yeah. can't. You get in trouble. But it's a joke. And it's also the character is fucked up. Right. Yeah, yeah, the character is super fucked up because he was yeah. going in crazy. But that's what's unfair is that you guys are both allowed to be like, I'm a comedian. Whereas me and AD, we got to go over here. We, Us real street dudes, we, we're not allowed such an excuse. But I see. See, but I think that's why. Nah, you got it. You know, you got to earn earn your colors, bro. What? <laughs> you know what I'm By saying? being funny? Like, no, no. Yo, get on stage. I... Take your licks. Oh, I don't know. That's it. So you want to take the licks? That's you can't. a lot. I would rather rap than do stand up for sure. Really? Yes. Well, it's because you want to be black. No, it's because <laughs> as you guys can see, you know, don't want to be. You black. know, I got bars. No, you got bars. I'm oh, rapping my spit ass off. Spit oh, something. No, 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 I can't no, see that. Exactly. I don't work like this. I gotta. I need my lean. I need ten bitches in the stew. Oh no! no. Yeah, yeah, you did it. I don't want it. We will, we will rock you. No, but yeah, I think. Yo, hold on. I was like, I was like, I was like, you know, I was plagiarism. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Give us something, bro. Just nah, give us a hot I, 16. I'm not ready. I, I imagine, gotta, I, imagine we're Tim Westwood, your favorite uh, personality in hip hop. Yeah, like black and rapist. <laughs> <laughs> it's him then R. Kelly. I'm just enjoying the beat. Uh, I'm not gonna uh, rap. Why are you not uh, gonna rap? You're uh, embarrassed. Okay. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> he gonna say something sus. Watch about me. AD in this bitch. I wanna see his balls. <laughs> All right, done. I'm what? Done. What? I'm done. Let's go. I'm done. <laughs> that's just oh, where man. my brain goes. Was, hey, I was going somewhere fire. The bro. flow was good, right? Yeah, hey, the flow was great. The topic was super interesting. I was going to say something about like how his nut was all over the wall. Oh, that's yeah. a compliment, bro. He says bend him got... over the couch and pull down his drawers. Oh Ooh. my god! <laughs> Tie his ass up. He won't be able to crawl. Oh shit! <laughs> this <laughs> is crazy. I'm beating up them cheeks till next Let fall. Don't touch me! <laughs> Don't touch me! Oh. Don't touch me! Let's go! When bro. I want some ass, you know who I'm gonna call. <laughs> Yo, I don't got bars, bro. He's the best gay rapper of all time. For real. Now, are you doing Icaramba? So she said, Tana, who? Yeah, Put a dick in his mouth. Now he speak with a draw. No, 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 That's, no, crazy. No. That's crazy. That's too crazy. Too far. Too far. Ty's gonna spit on you. Too far. <laughs> you're gonna spit on him. <laughs> spit on him. Hey, did you see that situation? What? The white people here keep multiplying, bro. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's, he's Filipino. And that he, guy? He, he's a secret Mexican. Oh, wow. Oh, he's, wow. He's Mexican, too, but he don't say nigga. His oh, name really? is His Some name Mexicans is Phil. It's short for Fili Him. Felipe. You say it. Yeah. He's 3%, bro. Lucky. He says the <laughs> N-word all the time. He says the N-word all the time. <laughs> I am, and nobody I am, takes I am, issue with it. AD has said that he gives Duno the pass. I don't care. It almost feels like a not white people word. Yeah. More than a yeah, black yeah, people exactly. word at yeah. this point. Well, what about Asian guy? I, I see an Asian yeah. dude say it. Oh, hell yeah. All the time. Stupid young. It's my guy. 
Jason grew up. Oh, saying, Jason, yeah. I think Jason retired yeah. it. He wanted to start. I'm a dude. He, he's he wanted a dude. to stop being taken more serious by professional society. So he's like, all right, I'm gonna eliminate this out my vocab. That's I'm still kind of iffy if Trev can say it. I'm still iffy if you can say it. Um, <laughs> so, so let Are me, there any black people you don't want saying it? For um, sure. <laughs> the nigga that want to interview you, Sean King. Oh, uh, Jesse Lee Peters, who just got yeah. caught sucking dick. Yeah. Wait, no, <laughs> He's he's no, like he a black didn't. conservative. Yeah, I didn't know everything. Yo, you it, there was are a Daily Beast bro. article that came out nah, yesterday bro. saying he's sucking all kinds of wangs. He's the Daily Beast. He's <laughs> he was Daily Beasting on some cock apparently. Yeah. Wait a minute, Jet, the guy who had the Amber Rose interview that was super viral. Yeah, I'm a homemaker. Was it? I don't know. The black was guy. That, that shit was crazy. Wait, which one? The dude that did this? Okay, I know what you're talking about. Right. He just seems like Uncle Ruckus to me. He he been trying to interview me for a minute, and yeah. I I don't really want to get on the right wing podcast circuit yeah i feel like that might be a bad look for me but this guy in particular well, i just wasn't really fucking with his whole thing and now i find out he's had all kinds of dicks in his mouth but and that's I'm not like, a bad uh-huh. thing bro oh, so no, you're homophobic but, but he's he's wow, he's done know. so much to shit on the gay community that it's very very hypocritical uh, i see so yeah if you're a hypocrite see, i don't like right. people like that yeah no. be about that life exactly like I that, think I think it's it's weird you don't um, do porn with guys. I've been thinking about getting into that. Yeah. Don't look I mean at me, that. nigga. This nigga don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> Straight in your eyes. I'm holding out. There's only one guy I want to work with. <laughs> don't look at me, nigga. How no. much? This nigga how big? How big does the check need to be for you and Adam to fucking take one girl down together? Take her down together. No, I'm trying yes. to take him down. You oh, taking my. a girl down with a dude? Bro, the check to bro to but take you, it down. I could. I don't know. I couldn't do it, Adam. Bro. Why? When was your, when was your because last train? Because he want to sit there and he, he look you, at me. He got you on length. I'm gonna sit there with an easel and I'm gonna <laughs> oh paint my, you. Oh my god! Imagine while, the while you're yeah, fucking, yeah. I'm gonna be painting a picture of you fucking. That's what I'm into. It's like it's gonna be like Titanic. He already says he's waiting to see me in the metaverse. Mm. Oh, so he could do it over there. Well, I figure that won't be That's gay if we freedom. fuck in the metaverse. Yeah. You think Adam uses Viagra? He tries to act like he don't use Viagra. I might need to use it with you. I'd use more Viagra than the average person. Yeah. No, he uses the gas station sex pills. Gas station sex pills, honey. You ever use those? Blue Chew. Blue Chew's fire. I fuck with the Chew. You just yeah, say yeah, that because yeah. they're sponsor. They're sponsor. <laughs> they're sponsor. Let me let me ask I mean, this, Andrew. So you've known of No Jumper yeah. since uh, the very early days, I'm since a we fan, podcasted bro. early on. But how how did you eventually become aware of the No Jumper universe? It was kind of crazy to me to have you mentioning, you know, guys like T. Rail and and all these different people that sharp that you were paying attention to in this world. I, it was YouTube clips. Mm. Like I watch your streams. My nigga. Like, I, I'm serious. Like, it all it just pops up on my thing. And, like, you guys created this this universe. And I just got wrapped up in it. I was watching some of Sharp stuff. I was watching you guys. And I don't know. It's just, for me, I'm not like a, I don't listen to, like, the whole podcast. Yeah. Like, of any podcast. Understandable. I'm a clip guy. I do this to many people's podcasts. Yeah. I'll, I, like, I'll watch a full flagrant here and there, but for sure I'm going to watch like a couple clips that's from every it. episode. Yeah. You know? and, and that's why we put out clips, at least for me. I'm yeah. just like, I know there's two different people that are watching videos on the internet. There are right. people watching videos under 15 minutes, and there are people watching two hours. I like clips. I like clips. I'm clips. clips. And the clips make me go see the if whole... If it's fire, I'll watch the watch whole the interview. Whole shit. Yeah. Mm. So then this whole... And then that, the, like, the No Jumper universe extended a bit for me. I started watching the soft white underbelly guy, who's mm-hmm. very interesting, like... I don't know. It's just cool how the algorithm works. It like knows what you're into, and then it just starts suggesting these things. We're all we're not all that unique. Like the motherfuckers that watch this are also gonna like Mark's stuff. We're also right. gonna like something else. I haven't even started watching. Every day it. when I see software underbelly in my feed, I have to decide: do I want to spend a half hour learning about some random fentanyl addict? Yeah. <laughs> Usually it's a no, but here Sometimes and there I dive yes, in. Bro. Yeah. Or yeah. you'll see like three million views. You'll be like. People you know are what fucking with me? it. I gotta see it. The Embraer family was the top. Oh, that yeah. shit was crazy. That was crazy. Especially yeah. when he went to their house. I was like, oh shit. Yeah, that was wild. Yeah, yeah. 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 Barking. He's barking like a dog. Well, that's kind of fu- that was fun. Yeah, that shit was crazy. I was like, when I was in Tennessee, went? Lena was pointing out. She's like, that family is not that far from here. Get out of here. From the inbred family, I guess the Appalachians, it's not that far from, from Tennessee. I can see you vlogging and shit. Oh, I would love to go vlog with those fucking retards, yeah. Oh, my Damn. God, dude. That, it wasn't their fault, fool. I know it's not their <laughs> fault. It's yeah. not your fault. You're fat. You're still fat. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, no, he plays a fault. bigger it's part It's not my fault that. I'm going bald. Yeah. It's Again? just a, a fact of life. Well, I've had two hair transplants. Well, you got to get two. That's what everybody I, I, says. I could easily see myself going for a third. Run it back. It looks few, good. Few, you know, T-Rail got it done in Turkey. Let's go. Well, Let's that's go. where everybody goes. Yeah. Turkey's the spot. Well, I did it in Beverly Hills. Yeah, you, you paid top dollar. Yeah, yeah I didn't want to leave. Yeah. Yo, I know exactly how I found Mark's stuff. 
I was watching an interview with you and Sharp, and you guys were talking about this girl that kind of tricked on Mark. <laughs> right, right. What uh, is her name? Fuck, what's her name? Uh, Ashraya, the one with the big ass like fucking. That. Oh, yeah. exotic. Exotic. She had yeah, the big yeah. flower but tattoo her... over a pimp's name on yeah, her face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, like, that took me to that, and then other interviews. But it's just, yeah, that was the wormhole. That was an interesting story mm. with her. No, yeah. she. I mean, because the crazy thing about her is that she did interviews. Then M Mark is sending her money and doesn't yeah. realize that it's basically her pimp who's just like a, <laughs> a thug dude from South Central who's basically managing her slash like scheming all this money out of Mark. And then Mark, who has a heart of gold, realizes at a certain point, stops sending her money and then pays her and the dude more money to come on the show and admit that they had been ripping him off for money. He paid yeah. more money for that experience. That's a W for them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I yeah. wonder about his uh, business decisions. Why but even pimp? The content now? was good. Like with 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 OnlyFans and like these other hustles, like they're legit ways where you can make money in the sex game. Yeah, I he's don't, a legal pimp. I am. Yeah, not, exactly. No, but like, I do the OnlyFans thing because it scales. Like you know, if you're if you're lining up dates for a prostitute. You know, how many dates she, can she do in a night? Ten, whatever. I mean, if you film a video of a girl sucking dick and she gets popular on Twitter and Instagram or whatever, 100,000 people could buy that same video. So that's why sometimes I wonder why Sharp isn't a little bit more open-minded to the digital pimps. Is he uh, still active? Nah. Oh. Sharp just wants to do good content, man. I haven't asked. He's doing good content. But I would assume that he's Oh, not. he's doing great content. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's kidding. He's he's doing doing no, yeah, he's doing great I'm content. I'm just curious in general. It's just like... It's like, uh, you know how you had to like have like, you know, behind the, what is it, what do they call speakeasies for alcohol when alcohol is illegal, mm. right? And then all of a sudden it became legit and it's like, you still going to have a speakeasy or you going to open up a bar, right? You can do this right now. That's OnlyFans. OnlyFans is the bar. Right. So why you got these girls out in the corner? Like... They don't even got to fuck and people paying money. Because there's different levels like, to pussy. Like, I, I would assume most of the pussy that's walking fig right now is probably not <laughs> pussy that would do terribly well on OnlyFans. Mm. There's just levels, you know? Yeah. That's true. That is true. And you're not going to get followers from being on fig. Although, I mean, the followers you do get will probably literally follow you home. So I mean, they'll be very, very dedicated <laughs> well, followers. It's, it's, you know? The mirror, it was legal now out here. They can walk the streets in peace. Oh, without really? Getting, without getting arrested. You yeah. can smoke fentanyl out on the street. California, it's an amazing place to live. Yeah. How do you feel about all this, Duno? These white people and black people taking your homeland? Shit. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> shit. He's black. <laughs> I don't even know, though. Do you want to remember? <laughs> Do you want to remind Andrew that you're only 22 so that you don't really like. Like, he always uses that He's excuse. Having everything. He's like, I'm 22. I don't really know what's going on. Nah, but I think the pimp shit is crazy. I mean, hey man, but you'd be surprised, man. You see some bad bitches on Fig, no cap. When you really? when you drive when you drive down Fig, they still look good when you bro, get close up. Bro, every once in a while you see a bad bitch and you're like, you ever double back on one? I, I've seen one. I'm like, <laughs> damn, why are you out here when you can be, be making money on OnlyFans? Yeah. You do think about shit like that, like and shit. I think me and Terrell were having the conversation last time. He's like, damn, last time I drove down Fig and there were some bad bitches, and you wonder why they're walking the blade. Probably because they're addicted to fentanyl. Yeah, that drug shit changed. They need, they need or, their maybe, fix or maybe, or right maybe OnlyFans, you gotta wait a month. You're or gonna have to get your bank account certified. There's a lot of steps you have to do so to sign up for an OnlyFans that a crackhead realistically is probably not. So you're do. assuming that every fucking hooker on Fig is addicted to fentanyl. Or something. I doubt it. Some, right, something or Zaza. Sure. Or in a crazy relationship. Or, or yeah, or yeah. in a fucked up situation. Maybe they're just a Zaza addict. <laughs> see, but, see, but I ain't gonna lie. The craziest shit, the craziest shit I've seen was like in Hollywood when you see like the um the transgender, then they get picked up by dope ass white cars and shit like that, beamers. Yeah. And they get picked up by I live around there and I, and sometimes I go to the seven eleven and late at night they're getting picked up by like badass Porsches, yeah. businessmen and all types of crazy shit. When we oh, were yeah. on Santa Monica when we had our office over there, there was like an official business that was pretty legit next yeah. door. And one night we realized that the owner of the business had picked up a couple of trans street walkers from the block because there's a shitload of them out yeah. there. Yeah. And he was clearly clapping their fucking cheeks in his office. We're hearing it. <laughs> I'm hearing yeah. this fat fuck bang out a fucking 25 year old fentanyl addicted young African American fucking transgender person. Yeah. I had to go get in my car and leave. I'm like, I don't want to fucking hear this when I'm just you trying lying. to get some work done. Yeah. Is this the same area where the the, the bum was viciously beating? His yes, head? it was. Yes. We had a Jesus bum who Christ. used to beat his, his meat into a fucking uh, sock. On Melrose? Our, no, this was on Santa, Santa Monica Boulevard. Where was your store? This was 
post store. The store was on Melrose. Melrose, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I remember that. Definitely. So, I remember your your downtown spot. That's yeah. where I did the interview. That was when we were really on some scumbag shit. Yeah, I don't even know about that. Place. Grimy. Oh yeah, that's the old. That's just Skid Row. You probably honestly would not have even wanted to go there. You'd be like, no, nah, I'll wait till you guys move. Yeah, I would went there. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, Andrew. wait, are there neighborhoods you can't go still? Yes. Yeah. Most of them. Really? There's only like one or two. Even though you're not active anymore? Just one or two I can't go to. And like, what happens if you go? Dies. I'm, I'm going to go meet Tupac. Really? I'm going to go dance that. with Selena. And now you're even more recognizable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? So it's like, oh man. Yeah, that's crazy. So what happens if like traffic just takes you there? Traffic don't take you there. <laughs> it's, that, it's that far away? No, I'm just saying like, see, I'm from Compton. So Compton yeah. is like real small, but like, Compared to where I live now, like, there's no reason to be caught in traffic. There's no way to be caught in traffic in the Amigos. And, Andrew, I'll tell you that in the grand scheme of gang-affiliated rappers who have issues with people, he has managed to be, like, the number one gang-affiliated rapper in L.A. that everybody gets along with. I've met almost nobody that has any kind of issue with him. Even enemies. Why do you think that is? Well, because he's not scandalous. He got a big Kool-Aid man smile. Like, (laughs) they fuck with his vibe. I don't know. No, I just... Because he got veneers on. No, I just, bro, I've always always played it fair. What does that mean? (laughs) Meaning, like, somebody can have a drop on you right then and there. You feel me? Like... Could, you can you can literally get this person, you know what I'm saying? And you're like, okay, you give them a pass. Or somebody will see me out with all their homies by themselves. They can get me with nobody know, and they'll be like, all right, we give you a what, pass. What type makes shit. you give them a pass? Like what? That's that's lot, like you're kind of you like you playing God in that moment. Well, a lot of times it's like family. <laughs> right? If they got their kids there or something like that. No, no, not their kids, but it'd be family. So like the gang shit gets a lot a lot political. So like like where I come from. Some of the enemigos is family members to me. You know what I'm saying? So Meaning your actual my relatives. Actual, my actual family. Just happen to grow up on a different block. Down the street. Just grew up on a different... It, there's, it's so close how close Compton gangs are. So you're like two minutes away from each other. And then one street can divide y'all and make y'all be from two different places. So do you call them? Do you guys talk as like family still? Or does yeah. that break up your actual no, but bloodline? That, but, but that's sometimes it do break up people's bloodlines. You know what I mean? Which, which Brother, I think when you're younger, yeah. it, fuck, I think when you're younger, it could get a little awkward because you guys are both still like super turned up and it's like, I don't give a fuck. But I think as yeah. the older you get, shit closer. Or even maybe when family members die, brings you guys together and shit like that. Yeah. But I've, yeah, I've seen situations where cousins be fit and it's like, oh shit, and they don't talk. Really? Maybe like if grandma's around, they will like maybe, but they won't even talk. But I think I, I, shit, bro. People get older, they have kids. Kids meet their kids meet their kids or the grandmas and shit like that. I, I forget who it was, but there was like a hood vlog that dropped fairly recently where you had a dude in the neighborhood talking about how his dad is from yeah. the other side it's and like how basically if he saw his dad, he would have to pop him. Get the fuck out of here. Hey, but it's situation. Well, I think it depends. Like, if his dad didn't raise him, I think he don't give a fuck because he's just in. Like, yeah. Oh, he's already. Resentful. I'm guessing the dad wasn't fully in his life oh, yeah, if he was open to popping him. You know? Yeah, he ain't like his dad. Definitely. Yeah. So even in the Mexican gangs, it's like that because like family's such they an more important ruthless. part of culture. Like, it's shocking to me you would just dead your cousin because he was born. A I just couple think, blocks away. I mean, I just think it, it depends how deep the like. I I just think I I think it depends. Because I don't gang man, I'm more like of a tiger. I mean, we still beef with food, but there's food that I like know in my home. It like like the dude, like when I got shot, the dude that saw me, I've known him since middle you school. You got shot? Yeah, and then he and then but they grew up only like up the hill from me. Like we share the same liquor store. Or probably like my nephew probably went Why'd to school with him. Shoot you? I mean shit, wrong place, wrong time. And I got shot on house arrest too. While being a house arrest. You were at your home when they got well, shot? Well, I was outside the building when I got shot. Fuck. But you know, I, I but I think like their mom knew my mom or like my mom goes by bread in their hood. And shit like that. So I think. Where'd you get shot? In my foot. What kind of bread? Why did they shoot you? (laughs) Bimbo? Pan dulce. You fuck with the bimbo? Pan dulce. Wait. No, they shot you in the foot. Why? Why would they shoot for the foot? I mean, shit, he just shot. Like, he just shot. Dance, bitch. It wasn't like (laughs) that. No, but in LA, you could be at the wrong place at at the the wrong wrong time. time. Yeah. You could just be walking down the street and somebody wants yeah, to kill somebody, they'll just shoot at somebody random. Yeah, cause like where Yeah. Yeah, cause like where I grew up, so where I grew up, I grew up in the hood, but I'm not from that hood. 
You feel me? Like, like I don't gang my but where I grew up, if, if automatically, like, oh, if you grow up here, we don't fuck with you either. So it was, it, it's kind of like, oh, well, we don't fuck with them because they don't fuck with us. Or maybe they yeah. killed one of my homies or one of the, my homies and killed even, there. And even by association, like, where he lived at, if the enemies over there yeah. come through there and they feel like they mad, they be like, you live over here, you damn near from there. So a lot of guys, they join the hood to be like, damn, they going to trip on me whether no I'm from what. here yeah. or not. And then, too, like... I remember, like, growing up, a lot of guys that ended up being in Amigos used to spend a night at my house. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And it's like... It's cr- that is crazy it's, it's when you crazy. do grow up with them ah. homes. But so you see your homeboy and niggas is like, yeah, we want to kill the same nigga that you was playing Pokemon with. You like, know what I'm saying? Let, let, it's, let it's, me it's put it in perspective up. for you. The other day I'm interviewing this this dude from Fruit Town Piru named mm-hmm. Stoner from the town, a.k.a. J. Stone. And he, I'm having a conversation with him. He's basically talking about this one day where he wandered over to a crip hood to kill someone because one of his friends had gotten killed by somebody from this neighborhood. And I asked the question and they almost kind of like laughed at me because this is such a silly question. I was like, were you going there to kill somebody in particular? And they're like, no, 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 no. Just, just anyone from that area because it's like get back. Yeah, and it would be so difficult to target one specific person that to them it's like, oh no, that we're gonna go to a random area and just clap some random fucking guy wearing a blue hoodie walking down the Jesus. street. Which to me is kind of don't even my, gotta be a blue hoodie. I, I know that's how it goes, but it's also kind of mind blowing to me that I'm just sitting here having a conversation with someone who actually did that. You know? Do you guys ever like? Is it ever, is it ever like too nice a day to kill? <laughs> like, is it ever like seventy four? You know, it's and, crazy. Like, it's always most nice of the, out here, though. Most <laughs> of the shootings happen like in the morning times, and you know what I mean. Like, yeah, bro, can people be some, hours. Yeah, I know homies that got shot while smoking the blunt before going Six to work. Morning, seven and in I'm morning. like, what the fuck? But I mean, like, I, but I think there's, I mean, fuck it. There's also rules. Like, if somebody's with their kid, I'm pretty sure there's people that are out of pocket and have killed or shot people while they're with their kids. But well, nowadays, I, yeah, I see videos. Of yeah, niggas but, with their kids, niggas run yeah, up on them. That, yeah, but like actually, a, this is maybe good. It's like father of the year. Like, it's you know. But yeah, like I've seen like <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because he it's took like, them shots and survived. Yeah, it, no, it's like a shield. Your kid's like a shield. Oh, now oh, you're gonna spend oh all the time God, with your kid. Andrew. No, I'm saying you you're gonna spend all the time with your kid because no one's gonna shoot you. Right. Well, I no, mean, so it's making if you people a better gave a father, shit, then that would be smart. Your, but I don't think they give a fuck. But right? in that crazy, like that's how you know you don't care about your kid, bro. Yeah. Is if you had him, you won't get shot, and you're still like, fuck that kid, man. Oh. Or you are like just want to spend time with your kid and kind of you know, maybe not bullshit like that anymore. But so think about the decision yeah. that I have to make in terms of like who gets brought into the no jumper world, and yeah. a lot of people. Your kinda, life is really hard. No, no, <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. fine. Yeah. You're but, the victim. But, <laughs> No, but this guy can't walk down a 30th street. It's easy for me to fuck with an AD or a T-Rail or a Duna who's like not going to use the platform to sort of propagate any hatred or, or gang beefs or anything. Right. But a lot of people wonder, you know, why didn't Crip Mac get his own show on the channel consistently? Yeah. I mean, that's that could be a real liability since he's actively out here, you know, going to the Popeyes in his neighborhood, in the neighborhood that he beefs with and talking shit to the fry guy and shit like that. Yeah. You know? AD hasn't done that in a couple months. Oh my God, I'm a politician though, man. Like, you know, luckily I was able to. I had people that helped me out, help me like travel, see the world, and stuff like that. And then I'm like, damn, this shit real smaller than I think. Yeah. Like these little corner and shit like that. He and, fell in love with the cocoa, basically. He was he was out there with <laughs> OT Genesis. He took one snort. Ah, he's like, I'm never going back to the block. <laughs> now, but I think yeah, I just thinking of, like like shit, bro. I'm glad I never like. Got into like a ganger because I think there would have been a lot of people I could have not inter- ever interviewed. So you know, like I always just stick to the graffiti. So obviously, yeah, we do beef it with a with a couple of food. There's probably places I still won't ever go to. But you feel me? But there's a lot of there's. I'm way more free to talk to anybody, interview anybody from different Mexican guys because you know, like fuck with everybody, support everybody. You feel me? Yeah, like playing it politically is very interesting though because that's a delicate balance because they might not trust you. You know what I mean? Like, you could come right. in with good intentions, but they're like, hold on, he's friends with that person, and we have beef with that person. Like, you have to That's be able to... That's you gotta think, though. Yeah. Because imagine if something like that did happen, where imagine if Crip Mac, who's currently incarcerated, if he had been leaving here, and somebody who was his enemy knew that he was leaving here, and they yeah. decided to do something. Yeah. I mean, what's to stop 
him or somebody associated with him from assuming that maybe I had something to do with setting it up. Now, in reality, there's nothing I would rather avoid more than right. setting something like that up. But yeah. a lot of times when something traumatic like that happens, people are just looking for answers. And the easiest thing for them to go to is like, oh, it was it was a backdoor operation. Damn, that is crazy. There's a, it, it, a lot of backdoor operations, though. Not here, but not in other from, places. Not from 22, yes. but hmm. yeah. Really? Hell, hell yeah. So people setting each other up. And yeah, females mostly. Really? Yeah, that's probably one of the biggest. That's that's probably one of the shit. Pussy the f- that shit is crazy. How do you know that your wife isn't part of an elaborate hoax set up by one of your comedy ops? Fuck. She very may well. <laughs> she may be. God <laughs> damn it. You, yo, Italy boys. Italy boys. Oh, Italy. I feel they like I've man. seen both of you guys live like the same week out of your life on fucking Were Instagram in story because he went yeah. out there with his girl too. I was in Positana. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Moffy Coles. I was yeah. in um, Venice. Oh, uh, yeah. Milan. Oh, that's the best, huh? But he went out there yeah. because he was on his honeymoon. You yeah. went out there just to fuck off and eat some pasta. Yeah. I mean, Italy's the shit, right? That shit was fly. That's the most yeah. flyest. They get it, huh? Oh, man. They, they get, get life, bro. Food is fire. Yeah. But I will say in uh, Positano, I was like, there ain't nobody fat here. And I wondered, and I found out why. Yeah. Is you got to walk up a hundred flights yeah. of steps every time you got to walk up. outside. That shit is a workout? Uh, Nigga, yeah. you're, you're winded before you even go eat or do an activity. Yo, it's wild. Like, there's a little food thing that's interesting. Like, my girl, like, dairy gives her, like, uh, allergies. She's like, allergies, dairy in America gives her, like, acne and shit like that. Mm. And she goes to Europe and she can eat all that. Nothing. No really? problem at all. And you start to wonder. You're like, yo, what the fuck is in our our mm. food? Even the pasta, the pasta that you would eat out there, you could eat a lot of it. And it doesn't It doesn't even yeah, make you yeah. full. And it's yeah. nothing. But like I always that. hear yeah. that, and I wonder, like, how different could it really be? But then when I hear you say that about your girl, no, that's, that's that makes me like, the, oh, The fuck. ingredients. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everything's fresh out there. Uh, yeah, I think it's a little bit more processed here, and I think they got, like, a higher standard of, uh, like, food I guess food health, like what can go into food. Right. But also we got 300 million people. Like we got to feed 300 million people. Like uh. when you got this many people, you're going to eat some shit. Yeah. This is what it is. This, this is a question that I really wanted to throw out there. Andrew, you've been criticized most recently by Joe Budden. People like to claim that Andrew Schultz kind of like used hip hop to get his career off the ground and then essentially abandons it. There was a clip of uh, of, of uh, Joe Budden basically saying, uh, did I say Joe Rogan at first? No, you said oh, Joe, 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 Budden. Joe Budden. Joe Budden said basically that he you... He wants a shout out for me so You were a bro. culture vulture and that you use like the Charlemagne cosign to basically get yourself some level of relevance and now you're doing the flagrant thing, which is not hip hop. Um, was this ever part of the plan? Were you ever like, ah, this will be a great way to infiltrate the black community? To infiltrate- Shout out to Joe Budden! <laughs> fuck! Fuck Andrew Schultz! <laughs> <laughs> Just so you we know what side he's on. Yeah. Uh, you got me. You got me, Joe. No, I, I don't think it was an elaborate plan, no. I don't think so. Okay. He's just yeah. mad at you? Say again? So he just mad at you? No, nah, I don't know. I don't know what his, his whole deal is. You see Andrew, his mouth crooked to the side. It's something. Yeah, evil. He don't Because he knows he's winning that he's even getting this kind of commentary from Joe Budden. You said it. When you started, <laughs> this is the thing that confused me about that. Only when, one of us talks about each other. When I saw Brilliant Idiots, <laughs> you know, early on, and even now, I mean, to me, it stands out as whether this was explicit or not. That mm-hmm. you kind of said, "Oh, this will be interesting. We could do a, co- a podcast that has a black dude who's very much like a big figure in hip hop, mm-hmm. and I'm a white guy. My understanding of hip hop is a little bit more limited, but I'm, a, but we both have the comedian. I know nothing thing about hip hop. I've, right. I've, I've never claimed to know anything." about hip hop uh i grew up in new york city so like by proxy i I, the music is part of the culture but at the same time like charlemagne just asked me if i wanted to do a podcast because we would just talk shit for hours on the phone every week and that's my boy Mm. if we didn't really go in it like this will be interesting that there's like like when you grow up in a multicultural place like race doesn't play as much like um in your decision to do a thing Mm. do you know what i mean like right like, like when I'm just going to play pickup with my boys, I'm not going, all right, well, we got an Asian guy and a, a black guy <laughs> and an Indian guy, and that will make our team. Diversity it's, check. Yeah, like, it's just like, yo, this is who's here. Like, even with Flagrant, like, Flagrant is wildly diverse, but it wasn't, like, calculated to be that way. Mm. Like, Akash is my boy. He's Indian. I've been doing it from, like, you know, my oldest friend in comedy. Alex was doing all the production and everything for stand-up for me. Mark's white. You know what I mean? 
But like, yeah, is, you just, is that why you, just you bring people in. Is that why Kaz got the boot? <laughs> yeah, exactly. We filled this black. What quota. happened with him? Um, it just it didn't work. It wasn't it wasn't a priority for Kaz. For, for, um, the, for, for yeah. the guys, the guy with the glasses. Who's that? Oh no, that's Alex. That's oh, Alex. Yeah, okay. Kaz is fucking killing it, and he was incredibly successful, and he was doing all these other shows, and I was like tripling down on on the pod. Mm. I was like, this is gonna be it, and you know, I put all this money into this studio, and uh, Kaz was, you know, he had a show with MSG, he had all these other things, and it just wasn't the amount of time that he could dedicate to mm. it. So, but I got I got love for Kaz, man. Why Why did you decide to go from Flagrant Two to Flagrant? Why did you decide to finally get rid of it? <sighs> it wasn't like a sports thing, right? Because you know, it, start, it started and it was supposed it to be primarily sports. about sports. Yeah, okay, it's yeah. hard to even remember that now. Yeah, and now it was just like, it's just, it's honestly what I want it to be is just the best hang on the internet. Mm. You know, so yeah. if we want to talk about sports, we talk about sports. If we want to talk about anything. And I also thought the two was a little bit confusing because people don't know this a reference for, for uh, you know, obviously a flagrant foul. Yeah. Like, I think they're like, is there a flagrant one? Yeah. Like, what, what else is going on here? Definitely that had occurred to me a few times. Right? And also, people call your podcast one word. Well, yours, they kind of call it, they say no jumper. But, like, right. usually it's like, you call it Rogan. They were already calling it flagrant. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's usually just one word that describes the podcast. Right. So, let's simplify it. I like it. Yeah. But how, go ahead. You go. Fuck, how awkward was that situation where y'all had Fresh and Fit on there? And what, I, I didn't want to put the, I didn't want to put the pot out. Oh, you didn't want to put it. I out. I told him I was like I don't want to put it out. You guys are gonna look bad. My beef isn't with podcasters. My beef is yeah, with like, um, institutions. Like I like like I like talking shit about politicians. I like talking shit about like institutions. I like talking about big grandiose things that like the only way that you can combat it is with ideology. I'm not really beefing with other podcasts. So I said, Yo, you guys are not gonna look good on this. I don't think we should put it out. Yeah, because and he, they were like, put it out. They should gave him the option, though. I yeah. don't feel like they came off that different on your episode than they do on their show nah. every night, maybe, right? And maybe that's why. No, no, but, but it's, it's a different it's, crowd, though. Yeah. No, yeah, and it's only different when somebody's kind of making you feel a little... Like, when he's making you stutter your words, I was like, oh, shit, when he was just... He was putting out facts, I was like... Damn, they kind of look a little dumb right now. That's the thing. It's like maybe they hadn't, you know, experienced the same type of pushback. And yeah, it's like, yeah. You also go on a podcast with like dudes that are married. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like we're <laughs> no, all married. Like everybody on the podcast either had everybody's either married or got a girl. Like so it's like we're we are the a lot of times the opposite ideal ideologically than those guys are. So we can and we can speak about it from like a pretty good perspective. We're like, no, you can have a good relationship where your girl's not trying to like take advantage of you. Right. And I just didn't. I you know I basically told them I was like I think you guys are operating out of fear a little bit too much like don't be afraid of every woman like there are women who want to be with you and support you and love you. There's two very different stages in a guy's life, and once you make it out of one stage, it can yeah. be kind of hard to remember the other stage where like you're young or or you know obviously some older guys get into this too where it's like. All your mental energy is going to like, how can I finesse as much pussy as possible? How can yeah. I meet as many girls as possible? Then you get in a relationship and that part of your brain just turns off. And that's why when a girl breaks up with you, it can make you feel so fucked up and lost because all of a sudden the part of your brain that's figuring out how to get pussy has to like regenerate and regrow. And it feels so foreign once you've been in a relationship yeah. for a while. Not me. Snap right back. <laughs> yeah, but well, you never stopped cheating. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> just I was kidding, an apology Lexi. trip to Europe. <laughs> no, that's just crazy. When I seen that part, I was like, "Damn, this is kind of low." You gotta go back you... to Italy now. <laughs> yeah, because you looked hella uncomfortable in it. Yeah, at man. some point you were like, mm. but I, just, <laughs> "I just, I just, <laughs> I just saw where it was going, and I was like, ah, these guys are gonna get ripped apart for this.'" And like, that wasn't really why I had them there. Like, I, to be honest, I wanted them there because I wanted them to see like a few dudes that have successful relationships and are pretty happy. We, we know why you wanted them there is because you're going for your Manosphere clout. You want to get the, the <laughs> Manosphere audience, right? You're like, fuck this. Kevin Samuels I'm getting all these people. I'm coming for Andrew Tate. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, he, Andrew Schultz to Andrew Tate. Is he infiltrating No Jumper right now? That's uh, what does he doing. want the gang community? I'm Perhaps. getting them on in. Perhaps. Yes. Make Duno offer. He's out of here. <laughs> Come on over, bro. Come on over. They already got enough guys over there. Um, so at, no, they asked me to come on. No, I'm talking about flagrant. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. The uh, the Fresh and Fit guys asked to come oh, on right, the pod. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, that's one thing with them. They they have no shame about hitting people up to try to get on their podcast because there's been a couple which is times good. Ask. When, I think when they were on should. Tim Pool. I'm like, how do you guys end up on Tim Pool? They're like, oh, we just emailed them and asked. I'm yeah. Like, oh, I guess. 
That's one yeah. more. Yeah. yeah, I guess I don't know. That was my whole thing about it. Like I'm gonna get I don't want people to look bad. When people come on the podcast, I genuinely want you to be like the funniest, best version of yourself. Like yeah. and I'm proud of that. Like when we had like when we had I thought you we had a great fucking interview. It was fun, it was loose. Like when we had Rogan on, I don't think you see Rogan like that a lot. Like mm. it's a very rare situation where you see him like that loose, busting balls, joking around. Fanny pack. Yeah, like no, he's always rocking a fanny pack. That is <laughs> never going <laughs> what nowhere. What does he put in there though? Bread. Bread. I have this thing, which is kind of like a fanny pack, but I typically wear it like across yeah, my chest. Yeah, because you're a pussy. Yeah. <laughs> put it where the fanny is, bro. That's what he... Literally, Rogan said that. He's like, <laughs> just put it where you're supposed Bong. to. Bong. What's, what's in yours? That's a purse, Weed. bro. Um, That's a purse. No, mine's just for something else. No, but see, <laughs> it, it's a weird <laughs> decision just... when you're him because, look, he, he got a watch, but it's kind of like he's such a big human that, like, do you think that he should have gone for the bigger watch? What is that? And 30? like same thing with Rolex. the bag. Do you think he needs like I the biggest bag in the store? What's the what is the uh what is is it 36 or 41? 36. 36. Yeah, you could do 41. I'm gonna do both. All right. Woo, you're gonna come in three rollies? I'm gonna I'm gonna keep Are you a G. watch guy? Nah, bro. I'm, I'm gonna keep a G. My dad had a lot of watches and shit like yeah. that. And when I went to go buy this one, it was the only one that had a blue face on there. And I said, give me the blue you gotta face. Gotta do it. Try to keep it on brand. You want a great blue face watch? Yeah. Vacheron Constantine. The overseas. What? I don't that know what the fuck the you best. just said. Are you a that watch expert best. or something? Yeah, I, I like, was going to say, he's an expert. Let's take a look at that. I like watch. Oh, this one. Yeah, bro, you got a white comedian watch. Yeah, this is... This is it's probably uh, expensive, huh? Well, uh, yeah. How much does it cost? This one? I don't know, actually, anymore. You're really full of shit. You know. He knows. He knows. <laughs> This is you a, don't got this watch is a, on, right? This is a Patek no. Philippe. Oh, yeah. Is it? But it's from the 1960s. I hear about that in Migos songs. Yeah, they're rapping about it's the Patek. new ones. Patek. I got a Patek Philippe. Yeah. Yeah, they're very expensive. Like, those watches are crazy right now. But this is an old one. This is, like, so long ago. And See, it's not but close you, wouldn't, you wouldn't even know. He has, an, exactly. he has such a creative style. He's like, I'm going to wear the cool new watch, but I'm going to wear the super old version I like of the it. old shit. I want it to look unique. I don't want it to be the same as everybody else got. Right. You know? And I don't know. I just think watches are a cool thing. Like, but this, as a comedian, too. Yeah. Don't you think that, like... There's certain boxes that people don't want to see you in as a comedian. Like, I don't think having the giant iced out flagrant chain is necessarily going to be a good look for you. I Yeah, because I don't like it. But if I wanted it, I would do that. But don't you think that people like sitting in the audience watching your shit are going to start I, to be like, wow, he's cringe. They want me to be authentic. And mm. if that's like what I really want, then they'll relate to that. And the people that don't like that will go somewhere else. And the people that do will come to me. But I got to create. I got to like give my audience because I don't ever want to hate my audience. Mm. So I have to give my audience who I really am so I can love you because you love the same things. Do you feel like you're so on the conveyor belt of getting these huge guests that it kind of takes away from you doing the episodes that's just you and your guys talking? No, we, the last few we did just us. Okay. Like, I like creating that balance because I don't want it to be a guest-dependent show, mm. but I recognize mm -hmm. that like growth is important. So it's the balance. It's like, you know, you, you have these big guests on. Like, for example, we have you on, and ideally some people who listen to this show, watch this show, can watch us and be like, oh, I like their hang as well. But you're, you're having a banger run. Like, Joe Rogan, Dave Portnoy, uh, Logan Paul, Jake Paul, Adam 22. Adam 22. Uh, and more. There's like, fucking, you've had like so many big guests in a row that yeah. I've kind of been watching it. And as a fan, I'm like, oh, this is interesting. Maybe this is... He, he's on the conveyor belt. Like he's, he's well, I also strictly had to needs go the big yeah, yeah, yeah. He had to leave for a I while. I had a honeymoon, for, you know, so I had to bank a few episodes. In but, Italy? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the best. It was the best. But yeah, I don't know. I like I like talking to people I admire, and I love talking to people who are interesting. Mm. Yeah. Is Brilliant Idiots on the back burner at this point? Like the episodes have been a little less consistent. I'm looking at the flagrant <sighs> Reddit. I'm seeing people kind of feeling like maybe it's it's not really That's, at the forefront of your mind. It's not it's not at the back burner, but like my priority, I think I think Charlotte's priority is definitely Breakfast Club. My priority is flagrant, but mm. like Charlotte's such a busy person. I don't even think people realize like how busy he is. Right. But like the fact that he can make time for brilliant to me, it makes me feel like he really values it. And I really value just doing it with him. Like, I've learned so much about this game just from fucking with him. So it's like, that's just so much fun. Sitting down, us busting balls for two hours is so much fun. So I'll do that as long as as he's down to do it. I absolutely love it. Are you it. part of the Black Excellence Network? Black Effect. <laughs> Black Effect Network? No, no. I think I was left out of that one. Yeah, how's that feel? That hurt a little bit? Sometimes we get left out. You Sometimes know? they be leaving me out of their cool black shit. They're and cool. I'm just like, like damn. Like what? I don't know, barbecues I hear about. And <laughs> is I wasn't Adam, invited. Is Adam he not wanna invited? To, he want to go to Hood Day. I'm like, bro, you can possibly get shot. I tried to go. It got canceled. Why would you want to go? To just be out there, to, to, to be feel a the vibes, vulture. to take it in, you know? I want to leave away. He wants to yeah, go in. Yeah, yeah. Why do you think white people are so excited by this? 
I don't know. Well, because when you grew up in the fucking forest your whole life, <laughs> you don't know what <laughs> else to do. You've been fucking hunting deer. They want to go on other. <laughs> but you do like danger. Like you were BMX dude. Like Exactly. Yeah. Hop, hopping over homeless people. I'm a spicy white boy. Fighting security guards because they tell you to leave. That's your thing? Going to the Jack Shack. I don't think yeah. I ever fought a security guard. You definitely fought a security definitely guard at the BMX ring. screamed at some security guards. Definitely, like, probably threw a pie at one, but I never, like... A pie? A pie? Yeah, I used to stay with a pie. That New Hampshire was different. Like, we didn't have guns, but we would throw a pie. Like, dry, like dry pies. It would be, like, a, a prop a prop pie, <laughs> like, from a movie, <laughs> where you actually wanted to have, like, shaving cream on it because it's it's better Take for the effect. Take this pie! <laughs> Wait, have you ever seen a drive-by? What the fuck, Andrew? <laughs> Have you ever been notice, involved notice what in I, one? Notice what I asked. I asked very specifically. A dry pie? A dry by, uh, like scene. I, I didn't a, say you were oh, in a dry pie. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, yes. You were just around and it happened. Yeah, it happened to me a couple times. Really? Yeah. Get caught? No, I ain't get hit. Never once. You can see some footage on the internet of him. He did a rap video oh, yeah. uh, with, with YG. And somebody was upset about the existence of a crip in a certain neighborhood, I Ooh. believe. And so they showed up spraying. How, 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 huh? <laughs> Just fuck, like that. Fuck those guys, bro. I got shot in a jab. No, but you know what's crazy about that day? Hold on, the YG. Video shoot? YG. Is YG appropriate in Mexican culture? The Go Loco song wasn't too bad. What about with his style, the way he dresses? No, he's from LA. I think I. I think that's his like one of his biggest like flexes, because you know all the essays fuck with him. They do fuck. That. Yeah, they do fuck with that's him. That's why. That's why I think like there's a difference between cultural appropriation and cultural appreciation. Yeah. And like the guys that do it right and the guys that care. And then and then and, and then I think bad. YG on Go Local he had like real gang members there. Yeah. And you feel me? Any sign. You and know, and like Sad Boy Loco, Loco he yeah. had a, you feel me? Like, yeah, I just think that whole, like, ex, that's like, how I saw it. But that's I'm just curious. That's about why when the whole I Caramba shit, yeah. when I said what I said, but yesterday when we talked about it on the show, I made it very clear when I was addressing, I was addressing that as Latinos in the industry. When I talk about it, it's like, as Latinos in the industry, we don't really get along. Not like people, because gangbanging is it's part of the culture. Whether people like it or not, everything that goes on is part of the culture. Yeah. But when I was addressing it, I was addressing it as us Latinos in the industry, we, Typically, don't get along. There's always like, fighting. Yeah, like you know, but just when I was addressing, I was talking specifically about yeah. Latinos in the community, whether it's rappers, YouTubers, podcasters, and yeah. all that shit. But I just think it just got a little taken out of proportion where I was yeah. just talking about our people in general because nah, you feel me. And to go back to what you were saying, I understand why Adam likes that shit because that video shoot, I had a white homeboy there. You know what I mean? His, yeah. He's from Palace Birdies. You feel me? Mom rich as hell. You know what I mean? And when the shots happen, I see him like climbing under a car. And I was like, bro, my bad, man. I, I'm sorry you had to go through this. He was like, this was the coolest day of my <laughs> life. I'm not gonna I say was that. like, what? That he, is crazy. Bro, he was he was so amped. He was like, I've never felt nothing this dangerous before. I was like. For how old were you when you first were caught in the middle of a driver? I'm like nine or ten. That's that's exactly the age I was oh, when, yeah. when I when I first got in that situation. God. But that's also going outside but, but, at nighttime yeah. at the wrong time. How do you guys like remain calm throughout the day knowing that that could happen? You don't remain calm, nigga. I, bro, PTSD is you're real. You're calm down. I, you're calm now. Yeah, but like, I still, bro. It took me a while to like. I still be having anxiety problems and stuff like that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Some days be, you know what I mean crazier than others and stuff like that but mentally it took a long time to get me to a place to like where i felt i could do something like i joke about it all the time but when i moved from compton i moved to north hollywood yeah and i was like damn i can walk to starbucks every day yeah. i made it my thing <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. to walk to starbucks well, every day because them. i could now no, they know. no 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 there are many starbucks <laughs> many locations you know, I'm just saying, <laughs> and that lady there's starbucks everywhere but that was like yeah, six years true. ago you know what i mean because yeah. i'm yeah. Used to like i can't walk anywhere it could be it could be three minutes away but potentially walking somewhere could be the day you lose your fucking life so you you have to drive because yeah just in case or yeah. I, i'll give you another one there was like a fire ass Chinese spot in the wrong neighborhood. Yeah. It's the best. You know what I mean? We would send people over there just to go get the food to bring it back because we couldn't go over there and get it. They don't deliver? No. <laughs> Fuck. This bro. ain't no this ain't postmates area. Yeah. Oh my God, dude. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of my favorite Chinese spots is, is, is somewhere they don't like me. I always just have the little bitty get off and grab it. Like it ain't worth it. 
And like and like the first thing I, I for always do when I get a car is tint the windows. Oh, for sure. Like like so, like the, so the window tinting is for your safety before it is for looking cool. I, I never did about, to look cool. That's so funny. That like that's why I thought people. Did. <laughs> I, I tinted my window so that I could beat off in the car. And that makes sense. Me, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You oh, just, yeah. No, but I mean, I think everybody should do that. It's like right now, like beat off in the car. No, <laughs> no. You can I be, agree. Yeah. You could be driving somewhere. Be like, hey, look, there goes Andrew, and just start following you around okay, and chasing. Okay. Well, here's so here's my here's my question. When I first got some fame, it took me a minute to transition from like. And I'm not I'm not saying I'm no fucking tough guy or something, but but like in New York, you you everybody minds their business. So if somebody's looking at you, there's usually a reason, right? So it's like somebody's staring at you, and you stare at them, and then there's like this moment where you see which person's gonna break, you know? And like that started to happen a lot more when I got some fame, and I wasn't ready for that. So I was kind of like mean mugging people. I was I was walking down the street, and then they'd come up and they'd be like, "Hey man, I saw you on MTV" or something like that. And then I had to calm down. So now <laughs> that you're famous. You already have this anxiety, like, do people want to get me? You you have fame, especially here. More people are staring at you. More people are looking at you from across the street. More people are walking up to you. Are you more anxious? Do you feel like everybody is the ops? Do you feel like everybody's about to get you? No, nah, because, you know, it's, it's usually love. And it took me a while, too, like... To adjust? Cause, no, because doing music first yeah, and then doing this, because I never forget, somebody was looking at me, and he walked up to me and was like, hey, D, I need an interview. And I got so mad, I was like, I don't do no fucking interviews. You know what I'm saying? Because I wasn't used to that aspect of it when it came down to that. But, like, nah, like, for the most part, bro, like, and it was one of my rules, too. I would, like, if I was fucking with a girl and she told me she had, like, a crazy nigga, you know what I'm saying? Crazy boyfriend. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'd be like, I got I, it. I would. <laughs> he, <laughs> he knows that word can be used I, in many I, ways. I, yeah. I figured it out. I, I, I put that together, guys. But I would be like, you know what? The pussy wasn't worth it because... Niggas will be gunning for you. Yeah. And my OG always told me, it was like, listen, you're on YouTube. You feel me? You're on TV. You're doing that shit. Somebody could be doing their homework on you every single day. All they got to do is pull your shit up, watch you, see yeah. how you walk, learn your mannerisms and shit like that. Yeah. So as much as you can, try to like, not necessarily lay low, but if it's situations that you can avoid, like fucking a crazy person's baby mama, yeah. just go go to the other side and mess with another woman instead. Yeah. Cause niggas are gun, gun you down over shit. Like when that. I first started popping, I still worked at Port Loco. And then, and then I would take the <laughs> bus from, from East Hollywood all the way to fucking Crenshaw and Vernon. And I still had situations where fools would look at me. And I'll be like, where, and then they'll be like, where you right? I'll be like, yeah, right, fool. And they'll be like, oh, no, nah, bro, we fuck with the what you're doing in your YouTube and your skit. And I used to be like, damn, I feel like a piece of shit. Now. There, there's yeah. been multiple times where I've seen a video come out of like a young drill rapper who like got a couple songs out. People know who they are, but they're still working at fucking Whataburger. And so then yeah. the ops run down on them and like embarrass them because they're working at Whataburger and they basically pull up on them and are like, you, you won't fight me, you bitch. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he's like, Bro, I'm wearing a fucking apron. Like, yeah, I, I can't fight you in the. In yeah, when I was working at Paul Loco, that's people would be like, "Hey!" And I used to be like, I'd be like, "I'm in the drive-through, bro. You gotta yeah, give, me, give me a three-piece, funny nigga." <laughs> I'd be like, "Bro, you gotta give me a second and shit." Yo, but Andrew, he's when we were in Vegas yeah. and. Oh, caveat! It was during the Bad Bunny Mexican concert. Jesus. Mexican Jesus, Mexican Jesus, sure. boy, they love him. Crazy, really, I couldn't believe it. And why do you think that you resonate so much in the community? Well, they kind of don't like them today, but... <laughs> I know. Well, that's because they, they fuck with you and they feel like you let them no, down. No, 100%. Yes, he, no. Did, he did let them down. I didn't let them down. I just think... I just think my opinion, like, you feel me? But then I have to understand... I have to understand. AD made a good point. I was like, okay, now nah, people always look for our opinions and I got to kind of meet the medium. But I do see a lot of shit in a comedic way. Mm. And I think that could be a problem sometimes because... I, I've seen other situations where I really want to make a joke out about it, but then I'm like, maybe I shouldn't have. And I debated about even talking about the Tiger shit. I was just kind of making fun of my peers in the industry, which they, we had conversations after the fact. But, you know, obviously other people didn't understand that I was, like like I said before, I was just talking about us Latinos in the industry, how we could do better within each other and make music with each other or interview each other. But, I, but for sure, I got to start understanding that, that a lot of the situations... Not everything's funny. Mm. Let's keep. It I don't remote. know. I do think everything's funny. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, that's, but that's yeah. That's white people <laughs> shit though. No, it is. that's comedian shit. Yeah, cause, cause when I said this, that homie was like, yeah, I thought that shit was kind of like, 
And I was like, yeah, I feel it. But I, but I also understood where, where everybody else was coming no, from. No, bro, because you got to think about it, bro. African Americans, bro, in history, we Do been you use we, that word? African American. Oh, when I'm, Only when here, I'm around, around white people, yeah. <laughs> yo, I feel mad uncomfortable. When people say African American, I feel weird, bro. But that's, that's that is a good thing to isn't point that out. Weird? <laughs> He's not African-American. talking about that when he's around like, his friends. Yeah. Nah. No, no, but yeah. but I'm saying like you don't Afri- say black people. You don't just say well, that. Well, well. I'm, I'm speaking for a broad audience. <laughs> but on the right podcast, hey, you hey, will hey. say LGBTQ. You know you're saying gay when you're just chilling, Plus. right? <laughs> Plus. Plus. Oh. <laughs> Don't forget the indigenous, the, the, the whatever, the, the pansexuals. Yeah. They're going to cancel you, Adam. You oh, better yeah. chill out. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I forgot about the plus. That's Shout out the gay. Shout out the gay. Plus. <laughs> hey, no, but on some real shit, though, like black people, we've yeah. been treated terrible in society, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. I feel like white people liked us just enough to be like, I will give y'all a president. And then now they'll be like, but we hate those Mexicans. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you think they're next? They the new niggas. Interesting. So when it well, comes I mean, down, well, no, I mean, we've been, we been dealing with a lot of whole life. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. First of all, you guys took our country. Wait a minute. Let me land. Let me land. Let me land. Not all of it. Let me land. <laughs> I'm talking about society wise, how they treat black people versus how they treat yeah. Hispanic people now. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Are you think? Are you think? Oh, for you think white people are more accepting of Latinos than they are black? No, they're more accepting of black people than they are Latinos. You know what I mean? In my opinion. So now, like, you feel me? Somebody like American Cholo, he sees a young guy, 22 years old. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, a situation comes up where your culture gets played with. You feel me? He's trying to be very, very serious. And then you got you, like, you making a joke about it. And it's like, bro, like. I want to be a fucking comedian. No, but where he came from, that shit wasn't funny. Your people had to fight hard to get to where they got, got to, bro. And they don't want to play around. They want to be taken serious. I understand that point. You know what I'm There's also views and outrage. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, so I think that a lot of people play into that as well. Like America I, Cholo yeah. put text on the screen that said, "Calling him out." Yeah, <laughs> it's like we know what's going on. I we see know my picture on there. I said, "What the fuck did I do?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> shit. That's just a, a cutting he, out Duno from the jumper. He didn't bring up no jumper ones. But okay, as a comedian, keep making your jokes, bro. I feel like people as a understand. comedian, I mean the, that sincerely. The standard Precious. for how you move around, like you have to be a mega famous comedian before you start to be like. Uh, I gotta really be careful about my security or whatever. But then also, I feel like oh, in yeah. New York City, it's such a culture of people just walking around. Like when I'm walking around New York City, it's like yeah, I have a lot of people talking to me and shit. But it doesn't feel like anybody's really acting like I'm doing some bugged out shit by just walking around. Whereas if somebody sees me walking around downtown LA, people are gonna much more be like Adam, like you should have what somebody. Are like doing? what are you doing down here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, there's just it's so densely populated. Mm-hmm. Like there's so many witnesses. No matter where you do now, there's certain parts of New York that are going crazy right now. You can now. kill me. Just make sure there's witnesses. <laughs> yeah, 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 you're not gonna do it and get away. Just with as long it. as they don't get away with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. I think New York is like like if you're in Manhattan, you're more worried about people who are crazy mm. than you are like a a specific gang or something to do it. Now, like the Bronx and like you go to parts of like Brooklyn, it's it's wild out there. It's wild out there. But in like Manhattan, what we call the city, it's I don't know. You're more worried about a crazy person doing something. And there's a lot of crazy people. Right. Yeah. Downtown, that was a big concern as well. Yeah. 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 This is by the tents or whatever. What? Yes. Yeah. A lot of tents <laughs> down there. Yeah. Bumtropolis. Tent talks. Bumtropolis. Um, so keep doing your jokes, though, on that. I mean, that like people got to understand that you're a comedian. And as far as I'm concerned, I don't think anybody's been canceled for a joke. A joke. People have been canceled that are comedians. But not for an actual joke. If, no. if the intention is humor, usually people, they might be offended, but they can get past it because they know your intention. Oh. No, I just think, no, no, I think, say, I think, say, I think. Say the comic who, who but that has. was the thing. No, what no, he I was saying Shabur, didn't seem that much Shabur's like a joke. still out here. Ari oh. still doing podcasts. He's been on Rogan a bunch of times. He's still out here. He still tours. If Ari oh, no, was no. black making those jokes, though, well, he made a he made a Kobe joke like right yeah. when Kobe died. It was wild. Yeah. It was wild. And yeah, he had it rough for a minute, but he's not gone. Well, apparently he ain't, he ain't canceled. Yeah, but that's the thing is like if if you're doing a joke, if it, it has punchlines, there's misdirection. There's something that actually lets people know, hey, I'm trying to joke around here. Usually people. Even if they're offended, recognize the intention. If it's just like, here's a really mean statement, and then someone goes, but I'm a comedian, that's different. No, yeah, yeah. 
He has I a good nice statement. He made a joke with the Kobe shit. Yeah, he did. He was purposefully. That's his whole thing. Is trying to say the most offensive thing at a moment where people like, are very, very sensitive. People. Yeah, and yeah. that he knew that that would be the yeah. most controversial take. So he was like, "All right, let's troll the fuck he out of the internet." He also does that when someone yeah. dies. It was a bit that he'd been doing See, for a while. I didn't and, know that. And a lot of people didn't know, so they just saw this dude. I think that what happened with the Kobe thing is like people were so angry that this person who yes. was like a hero for so many people got taken away from them, and like that anger needs to go somewhere. And that's the goal. I got Kobe tattooed on my head. The, I didn't think that shit was The funny. goal yeah. on Twitter is to not become the villain of the day. And a lot of times, like yeah. when Kobe dies, it's like, who do you get to be mad at? Like, you're not going to be mad at some anonymous helicopter pilot. Yeah. You're going to be looking for somebody who makes an inappropriate joke so you can get on his ass because that's somebody you can actually, who's walking the earth that you can punish yeah. right now by quote tweeting him and getting 10 retweets. Yeah, because you know, yeah, I think um, like fucking comedy could also come with a seriousness. Like when I was, when I was making that joke, I was, I mean, I mean, cause, cause it wasn't even really a joke. Just the way I said it, I was just kind of like talking shit in a way yeah, to yeah. the homie. So I guess, but people's perspective was like, oh, well, he's a comedian. This is what he does. But I'm like, I'm also like trying to be real about this shit. I feel like we should work together with more. Yeah. Obviously, I added a little emphasis. Like my voice kind of changed the tone. Yeah, sure. So, so, but I totally understand. But I also understand the sensitive of the video. You feel me? Like the video wasn't cool. You feel me? The shit sucked. You feel me? Like Tiger, you're gonna go crazy. You know, at least do it right. You Great know what song I mean? though. But the so me and Andrew both agree. Song Great song. Goes crazy. <laughs> when I sent it to him, he watched it one shit. time. He responds to me, and I didn't say anything about how I like the song. He responds. He just said, "That's right. a great song, bro." That shit goes so goddamn hard. I'm gonna get it up right now. <laughs> I can remember. Uh huh. And yeah. now I got American Cholo's version. Wait, can we play it on the video or not? Nah? No, not yet. Josh, the voice of reason over there. <laughs> <laughs> like, nah, but uh, yeah. <laughs> I can remember. White AD dancing to La Caramba. Yeah. Oh. And he trying to touch on my butthole. Uh. Yeah. No? Fuck. Yeah. 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 Like, like, yeah, but I don't know. I just think it was like blown out of proportion. But look, hey, look, shout out everybody that had their opinion. Like, when, like, for American Cholo hit me up, shit, we've been talking back and forth. But, and he was like, and he was like, I understand your, your perspective. Do I think it was right? No. But we should sit down and have a conversation. I was like, yeah, we could do it. But okay. Bro, I made it worse. You said nobody no, could get No, he can't. made it worse. You know why no, he yes. made it worse? I made it worse because they said, because American Cholo agreed with what I said. And it was like, how does a black man get it, but our own people didn't get it? No, no, and then no, and then he made it where he was like, do not say that. Latinos should stop killing each other. That's not what I said. Yes, you did. No, I didn't, fool. But you also, did say that. But also, I, that's what I said, killing. Yeah. I said killing. You said we shooting. don't want to get, shoot each other. You said something no, like that. No, no, I didn't. But do you I think said, that they I said, shouldn't? Put it up right now. Let's hear it. You want to hear it? Yeah. Cause he's I'm he's gonna sure. be caught in a lie right here. No, no, I can rumble. I, can I rumble. but I don't know if that's a crazy statement. Like, don't you want Latinos to not kill each other? I think, I think, I think they were saying that I wasn't. Right? Like, I, I want everybody. Not they were kill saying each other. he wasn't addressing the situation. Yeah, he instead made it about. You know what I mean? They seem like very different points to me. Like, people can be offended by the song, and people can agree that gang members should stop killing each other. These are two very different facts, yes. right? Yes. Although I thought it was a great song. The song is so fire, bro. I'm behind that song. You like yeah. that song? I'm not going to lie. Play it, Duno. And I'm looking for it. He knows he's going to get lie. Um, <laughs> but Are you ready? Okay. Let's go. Yeah. Everybody's like, oh, my God. Everybody's like, oh, my God. Fuck Tiger, dude. He fucking disrespected us. You know what? On the fire, we're going to beat him up. We said, I'll go beat him up. The song? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Like, what about collab with each other, repost each other's posts, comment on each other's page. Hey, I have this beat for you. Hey, I have this verse for you. I have this, I have that, I have this, I have that. Let's work, let's do this, let's do that. But we can't even do that. All he's making you do is you guys each put your opinion about this fucking weak ass song and then you don't like this Mexican's opinion or this Mexican's opinion. Now all the Mexicans, we are arguing with each other like, oh my God, I ain't like the opinion you said about Tiger song. You don't represent our people. Like, shut the fuck up. We don't fucking represent each other. Motherfuckers, half of y'all beef it. Half of us beef it. Half of everybody beef it. And y'all don't want to squabble each other. Well, oh, Tiger? Tiger? Oh. Where did I say kill? All right. Where did I say kill? Debunk? Where did I say kill? Because you guys were trying to put this statement that I was like, Well, you said no, beef, though. No, Once but, again, no, but the white but, man is but, spreading but, fake news about like, the exactly. Latinx community. And, and then when I said beef, like I said, I should have. That was my fault by not pointing out the fact that I meant us Latinos in the industry getting along more. Okay. You feel me? That's that's where I should have been like, I'm talking about us Latinos. But never once should I. Because that's. that's 
gangbanging is part of our culture. That's what it is. Like, yeah, yeah, it I is. can't change that. It, it's it's going to be around for years. It's, it's been there before I was born. You feel me? That's, uh, fuck, I grew up in the hood where some of my best friends died because of the, the gangbanging shit. I have, I have older homies that, that are in jail for gangbanging, but that's them. Everybody has their own path. I can't stop nobody from doing what they're doing. But if, it, like, but if I say my opinion, I, when I say, hey, I feel like us Latinos in the industry right. should get along more and, and do our thing, I feel like yeah, I think we. We did you dirty. I, I, I right. think I think we could definitely do better. You know what I mean? We did Piece you dirty. We lied on your name. Piece of shit. When I seen it, I was like, Damn. I was agreeing with Adam. You were yeah. sitting yeah. at home, just like, Damn, Damn, what man. a dickhead. I was like, kill. That's crazy. I never said that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but you you said that nobody gets canceled over a joke. Yeah. Dave Chappelle was standing on a big fucking stage making some trans jokes to thousands of people. You I don't can't think cancel Dave. And nobody can doubt that this you was a joke. This Dave. was clearly in the context of a joke. But yeah. I mean, they they went so hard trying to destroy his life but over it. But is he canceled, though? Damn. Never. He has the highest viewed show on Netflix in history. Mm. The Closer. So it's like, it helped. But does that kind, I mean? that like, kind of thing just, has to have an effect on you and other comedians where you're like, oh, maybe I'm not going to do this trans bit because no, I'm scared of the reaction. No, that thing is the reason why I'm selling my special. Mm. My I think that was abortion stuff primarily. No, they were cool. It was abortion. There's a Ted Bundy joke, and then there's a Michael Jackson joke. But the there's, <laughs> we made hell of my there's a lot of fucking crazy bits. I'm not gonna lie, and it's also like wild for a network when they see a white guy on stage, and I'm making fun of fucking Somali dudes. I'm making fun of like everybody that's there. Now mm. that being said, they were cool with my special. I'm not gonna say which streamer, but they were cool with my special, and then. The Chappelle trans thing happened, mm. and then they freaked out. Mm. So sometimes culture changes, and they're just like, "Yo, we see the backlash. We don't want to get this backlash." And they're like, "We need you to, you know, cut these jokes and blah blah blah." And then that's when I mean, you guys know the story probably, but yeah. that's why I was like, "No, fuck it, I'm not going to cut the jokes." And um, I think yeah. he broke barriers. I think Dave Chappelle kind of broke the cancel barrier with jokes. I feel like where I think I think after that situation, because when I seen the special, I was like. I mean, obviously it's funny, but like I said, I see it to stuff like you're when 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 I was watching the abortion clip you posted, yeah. I was watching it yeah, around so a lot of women. Yeah, and they were like, Me too. and they were like, and I was like, ah! <laughs> but 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 then when when you know what I mean, and then they were like, but we get it, like yeah. we get it, like. I'm pretty sure you have a deep sense of dark humor, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, you know what I mean. So when yeah. I was watching, I was like. That shit wasn't too bad. I've heard worse. Yeah, that's not like yeah. That, they, they had that one line. They were upset. The one line, the feed is deleted line or whatever. And it was that just was like a big Harry Potter fan. Funny, yeah, if amazing. you like Harry Potter, that's the line, right? So it's hey, like, Josh, I walked in and Josh was like, "That's that line right that there. Hit. That was the one." But for whatever reason, they were like a little worried about it. But but yeah, I think the, what's interesting about that joke is like there's a there's a, maybe like a six <clears throat> minute piece of it I put on YouTube. It's like the whole joke, and um, you don't know how I feel about abortion, and I don't want you to. And I like looking at the comments because both sides kind of feel heard, right? So both yeah. sides are like, well, you know, like the conservatives are like, well, you should be able to joke about things. And this is interesting. And the liberals are like, yeah, see, he gets it. And it's really funny to see them both feel heard and then be okay with jokes. And I think a lot of this is just kind of like feeling heard. Like this whole abortion debate, I think if both sides would just fucking have a real conversation about what their issue is, we could get there. There's nobody on this planet that thinks you should be able to abort a baby at fucking... Eight months, three weeks. Mm. Nobody on this planet believes that. No. That's so crazy. we all agree there's a time in which it's a baby. There's probably a lot of blue-haired feminists that actually do think that. They don't. You don't think? No. They might say but, it, but they're but so put concerned with them. fighting for their side that exactly. they will get it's behind tribal. that. They're the definitely do that. the yeah. same way that when you see the Republicans on on TV and yeah. they say that they don't think that there should be exceptions for the case of rape and incest, it's because they know that as soon as you start allowing any exceptions, that that's going to kind of open the door for Slippery a larger slope. percentage of the people that have it. So. Yeah. As much as it's morally abhorrent, from my opinion, to say that a fucking rape victim should have to have that baby, yeah. you do kind of understand why strategically Republicans feel like they well, can't there's allow also, for that. There's also, their argument for that is that the baby didn't do anything wrong, so why are you punishing the baby? Right. If you believe it's a life 
and it is ending a life. You're ending the life of the innocent baby, not the eight months is, is, is a yeah, long eight months. Eight months is a, is a human being. Mm-hmm. I don't care. Yeah, yeah, eight months is a human being. Two weeks isn't. Two weeks isn't. Right now, some people believe it is. There's that other thing that happened was hilarious. Like the shorty had the the baby. She was in the HOV lane. She got pulled over, mm-hmm. and she's like, "Hold on, hold well, on, Brent, yeah, yeah, it's two people. I thought this was a human being. Like when you start paying child support, you start paying child support at conception, mm-hmm. or do you pay when the baby comes out? Because if that's a life." Start coughing it up during. What about to say? Right? Like <laughs> AD's nervous right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm just saying there's there's this is like this is where things get interesting with that debate because nobody is that black and white about it. But this is an important thing that we've actually discussed on here before. If a gang member pays for an abortion, is he then allowed to get the teardrop tattoo? Oh my oh, god. Oh yeah. Okay, Terrible thank, joke. Thank Terrible yeah. fucking yeah. Such a good joke, I had to bring it back. <laughs> fucking, <laughs> fucking, yeah. <laughs> fucking when you were, fucking when you that wrote that. Andrew gets off on Get jokes. his name tattooed yeah. on you and shit. <laughs> Cross him out. <laughs> Put him on a shirt. Cross him out. <laughs> you really are a tagger. And then you have a whole chest with X's yeah. on him. Fucking. I fucking killed all my kids. Fucking was it. But when you wrote that bit and you wrote that last part, the 10 year old girl Joe part, yeah, yeah, were yeah. you like, hey, this shit might not sit well to a lot of people? Well, I thought that they would like that best. Pedophiles? Well, no. The, <laughs> so, what he's referring to is at the end of the bit, like I had, I don't know, the whole bit is the story of like a guy that was outside of an abortion clinic with his daughter, and his daughter was like 10 years old. And the joke I have about it, I was like, that's a little late. so so i do i do like a little thing about that and then i you know i'm asking the guy why (laughs) it it took you a little bit i was trying to get it i was waiting (laughs) so but then i'm asking the guy like uh you know he was actually protesting the abortion clinic and i'm asking him like why are you so anti-abortion and uh the guy was like, uh, he basically, you know, the sonograms made him cha- feel differently and yada, yada, yada. And um, I'm like, but early on in the pregnancy, it's not a baby. And he goes, yeah. He goes, yeah, it is. And I'm like, uh, no, it's not. And he goes, he goes, yeah, it is because if you leave it there, it's going to grow into a baby. So it's a baby. And he's with his 10-year-old daughter. And I was like, you know what? Your daughter's really hot. And then he goes. <laughs> no, but listen, listen, listen. No, he goes, what the fuck is wrong with you? She's 10 years old. And I'm like, yeah, but if we leave her there. <laughs> <laughs> but when she's he said that, I was like. A woman, you know what I mean? Like, I was like, what the fuck was he thinking when he wrote this? I'm just saying, like, for me, I'm just trying to find, like, the holes in the logic. Mm. You know? Mm-hmm. So, like, for me, I think, I don't know. I think, like, women see that joke. And if they're pro, you know, or, like, women's choice or whatever it's called, I think they're like, oh, I. I if we're not treating these young girls as women, then we shouldn't treat a two-week-old fetus as a as human being. Like, if we can distinguish between times and we can distinguish between, like, uh, age and all these other things, why can't we do that in utero? This should be, like, a straight-up negotiating thing. You know, like, if, if you want to sign somebody to your company, you know, they have a dollar amount in mind, you have a dollar amount in mind. With the Republicans and the, the the social justice warriors, I think they should get together and they should just kind of go back and forth and try to land on a number of weeks that they can agree on. Yeah. It's weird how that isn't how it's viewed, though. It but has that, to be one way or the that's other. That's kind of what it is now. Like, isn't it like four months or something like that? And then you yeah. can't do it? But like, but like the public is kind of like shielded to the fact that this is actually going to play out. On each individual state level, the Roe versus Wade overturn thing is not a strict ban on all abortions. There's just too much money to be made. Like, there's just too much money to be made uh, for lobbying. Right. So, okay, we've so far we've talked about gang shootings. We've talked about abortion. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about something that is perhaps even more disturbing. Okay. Gringo poppy. You and I. You want some clips? You boy. and I are this both friends. Of YouTube clips. We will explain. He and I are both friends of Brendan Shop. Yeah, shouts to Brendan. For, former Love UFC you, Brendan. fighter, current comedian and podcaster. I know you see it. People, for some reason, they want anyone associated with Brendan Shop to speak out against him because they don't like his comedy special. What, the, what is your attitude? They, on who the, is they to you? The redditors. Yes, he has a he has a Reddit page that is like is is massive. And, it will make you scared to have a Reddit. Yeah, and, <laughs> and it's like dedicated to uh, yeah, just shitting on him. And right. it's it's really unfortunate because like we got one too now. Mm. Do you guys have the? Yeah, it's pretty malicious. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting thing because Reddit is fascinating and fucking hilarious and like they're abs- like creative people on there and basically what it is is it's like your reddit page is giving 
thousands of people that might not have their own Instagram or Twitter that's popping yeah. access to a group Instagram that's popping. That's what a Reddit page is. Right. So now they have access to 50,000 people or whatever it is. And if they put something out that slaps, it gets views and it gets reactions. And all of a sudden, you get to almost feel like you're popping because yeah. your content is crushing. So you're going to keep on leaning into that. So it incentivizes them to be as mean as possible, as possible because yeah. that's the stuff that rises to the top yeah, is the shit that's the cruelest. Exactly. And then you guys, you got to be good at like making sure like or like the mods i guess have to be good at making sure that the page is healthy because at the end of the day like you don't want that page to take away from the content and i right. think that's unfortunately what's happening with the fight on the kid like they have a fucking great podcast like they're hilarious together like right. brian and brendan are fucking hilarious together and uh and brendan's like a really great dude he's a he's a genuinely sweet dude who helps people he's the reason i got on rogan like he was like yo you got to get this guy on this is before anybody was fucking looking at my shit like mm. And that really changed my life. So he's an actually a great dude. And um, and he's just getting destroyed by that thing. I told him to lean into it. I was like, bro, you got to sell merch. Like anything that they do about you, you got to lean in. And then I thought that they would appreciate that in one way. They're like, oh, okay, he's not ignoring and acting like this thing isn't happening. This is, he's like taking part of this thing. His Reddit is so fucked up that like they've made it their mission to expose him cheating. That's that's where it's like, yo, you going into the personal life. That's 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 wild, man. That's, are they? So they're like that deep into his life where there's people probably following him around, yeah, like, like security cam yeah, footage and shit. It, it's right? different. It's different, fuck, it's different when you have a group of people who are basically commenting on the stuff that you're putting out into the world, and yeah. it's different when they become basically like a large league of private investigators yeah. <laughs> who are gonna like overturn every rock throughout your life and find everything that they could possibly do because that's kind of where his shit is at yeah 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 it's yeah i mean you 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 know brandon like you guys are close or what well we did the interview but oh, I'm, that's I, all you know. i'm totally honest i saw the first six or seven minutes of the special yeah. i didn't really feel like i could handle too much more of it uh i think he's a good guy i'm not like a big fan of his comedy but i mean i fuck with a lot of people where i don't really like their rapping yeah and we're still cool right like that's not the entirety of who you are as a person idiot is a just fine rapper do know you know what i'm <laughs> the nigga looked at me i'm like <laughs> I don't like Josh's raps. I still fuck with him. He's well, a man. Well, and he's with your sister. Right. This and his, his raps about her are horrifically offensive. And I advised you him not some? to I advised him not to drop the Hash Brown Town K mixtape because of that. So I mean, I, I you cannot be a huge fan of somebody's art what and also think that they're a good dude, right? Yeah. And yeah, I mean, like comedy is like anything else. You like get better at it mm. if you put the time in. So, right. like, I think a lot of people don't realize that like Brendan's like very early into his comedy career. Mm. Like, I told him I was like, I think you put the like even when he did that first special, I think it was just too early. This mm. shit takes a while, bro. Like, you need. I mean, most people say like a decade before you're like starting to get nice. Fuck. Yeah, bro. I mean, no I wonder mean, I suck. You're only 22. I, I fucking suck. Now How much stand up have you man. done? I've done I've done like five shows. Okay. Yeah, but it, within the last, but see, but that's not even enough. Yeah. I, but he's like, I was doing come, back in New York when I was coming up. I was doing like twelve a week. Yeah, I've kicked it with him in that week. environment, and yeah. we're talking like five years ago, where I was watching him just do sets and just kick it backstage with the other comics. And me as a non-comedian, I'm seeing that and realizing like, oh, this is how people get really fucking funny yeah. as they spend fucking six hours a night kicking it with other comics backstage, <sighs> getting on stage, seeing what works, seeing what the audience feels with. It's like fucking boot camp for learning yeah. to be funny on Because a lot of times you have these ideas, you just don't have the tools to execute them. So you like have these premises that are really funny, but you just can't make them funny yet because you don't know, you don't have the skill set. And then eventually you develop those skills by just constantly working on it. So like some of your earliest premises, like some of my earliest ideas could have been my funniest. I just didn't know how to fucking do them just yet. Mm. And that just takes years. And like, cause you can only practice that shit on stage. That's the weirdest thing about comedy. Like guitar, you could just play all fucking day in your garage. Stand up, you gotta be in front of people and you gotta be good to be in front of them for a long time. So right now you're doing five minutes at a time. Imagine learning guitar five minutes at a time. How long would that take you? You probably bomb a lot, too. Oh, in the beginning, for sure. Especially if you do humor like mine. Like, I'm, I don't go up there, <laughs> give it up for God. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm trying to take almost like the least likable point of view and then create a fucked up argument for it. That's what I get off on. You see, so, but I think that's where social media kind of, like, you feel me? Because I was already doing my shit on social media. So when I started this shit, people already expected me. Yeah, to you just... had fame before you even developed a skill. Exactly. And that's where it's very difficult. 
Yeah. You know, and that's honestly where Brandon was. It's like mm -hmm. Brandon got like famous. He was he had one of the biggest podcasts on the planet. Like, especially uh, you know when that whole podcast is seen in LA, it was blown the fuck up. So it's like it takes time to develop, man, and work. But you from know? your perspective, if you were in his position where you were already famous for something else with the UFC shit, would you have intentionally chose a slower career path to be, maybe like gradually build up to that? Because I feel like. Just yes. getting like dumped into the fucking I didn't even deepest let my friends water. See me. It's gonna be tough. Coming up in stand up, I didn't even let my friends come out really? and see me. I didn't let my fan like my family. Nah. Like I wanna be nice. Mm. Like I'm the funny one I with you guys. That. I'm not about to let y'all see me be whack. You know what I mean? Like I need to like go grind, get good at this, dedicate my whole fucking life to this, and once I'm good, then people can start coming. Did out. you have a ton of insecurity about it early on? Insecurity in what way? And I mean, for me, if I was going to be forced to go get up on stage and tell jokes, I would be, you know, nervous as fuck. Whereas when I get out there to do a live podcast with them, I don't give a fuck at all. It's, that's super natural to me. Whereas uh. there feels like there's so much pressure and scrutiny on somebody when they're doing a comedy set, even if there's only 50 people watching. Yeah, I, I was. I wasn't like. So I wasn't insecure that to the point where like of uh, maybe talking in front of people. If that's what you're asking, mm. but I was insecure about how I did right. I had high expectations I never looked at it like insecurity but I looked at it as just expectations like I know how funny the funniest person is because I've watched them like I saw Patrice O'Neal so I'm like how do I become that funny so and I knew the discrepancy between where I was and where he was and it was just like every day how can I get better what can I do to get better like constantly listening to my set watching the sets over like really trying to feel out that interaction and what what I'm doing wrong why there's no connectivity like mm. Yeah, I, I never felt like I can't do this, if that's what you're asking. I right. never felt like I wasn't supposed to do this or wasn't like born to do it. If you were coming up as a, a funny guy in New York City at this point, though, do you think that you would think that stand-up was as big a part of the recipe? Because now a lot of comedians, you see that they have a podcast dropping a couple times a week, mm -hmm. and then you know that they're doing stand-up or whatever, but that just it seems like that's almost moved into the backseat role in terms of importance. Is that true, or is that just my, my nah, opinion? No, because like... I, we all did podcasts so we could do stand up. Right. Like, you know, but then at a certain point, it starts to feel like the stand up or, or the podcast is the real product. I, I, I haven't experienced that yet. Mm. But that's just because, like, my stand up footprint is probably internationally bigger than my podcast. Really? Okay. Because I look at Flagrant as being so big that I would assume that it kind of is bigger than the stand up stuff. Yeah, it's, it's, it's wild. Hard like, to compare. No, no, like, I don't know. Like, as far as like stand up goes, like, and again, my stand up's on YouTube. So YouTube is the world. There's a lot of people that are watching the clips, you know? Mm. And it's like, stand up is so much more digestible. It's like, I'm putting a three minute bit out there. Everybody got three minutes. You might not have an hour for the pod. Now, the pod has been awesome, and we've experienced this like insane growth. So, and there's just so few pods that are that size that you see it, and you're like, oh shit, this is you know, this right. is the mountaintop or whatever the fuck, right? But at the same time, stand up for me is always the passion, and then podcast was this way to like galvanize those supporters, right? And then create like a watering hole for everybody to come to rock with you every single week. How often can I put stand up out? I don't know, but mm -hmm. I know I could talk shit with my boys, which yeah, I love every doing. Day. Bang. So it's like, this is a great place for all the fans to go. Like you guys created this no jumper world, right? It's like a literally your universe. And it's like, this is a place where people who are interested in this stuff, they get to come, they get to hang out. When you guys want to put out your music, when you want to put out, you know, live shows, when you put out merch, whatever like that, there's a place that they could all come back to. So that's what I always saw the podcast is, is like, this is the super, super fan. You, nobody hates you for two hours. Mm. You know what I mean? Like this is—they gotta fuck with you to listen to you for but two hours. To me, the super fan is the one who's actually gonna travel to go see you tell jokes in front of fifty people in a basement real somewhere. Shit. That's yeah. that's some real super fan well, shit. That's, you know? That's that's why for me, like the greatest validator is, is the live show. I think that's mm. what separates people. It's like if you could do a live show, if people get a babysitter, they put on fucking clothes and they come out to see you, like that to me, that to me is success. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, there's numbers. Like, a lot of people are on TV shows. They might be on, you know, uh, sitcoms or SNL or these types of things. They don't really know how many fans they got mm. because the institution has fans. You know what I mean? Like, they're players on the Knicks that I like because they wear the Knicks jersey. And then they get traded, and I could give a fuck. Right. Because <laughs> I like the Knicks. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. like there are a lot of people that they think they're as famous as the institution, but when you're on the road, you find out. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, can real you shit? sell out? Like, they're musicians. We all know. Can't sell 3,000 tickets. Right. That's real shit. But they, a lot. you might think they're the most famous. They go do these festival shows and it looks like the whole world is there. They do one show with them. They can't get 3,000 people out. So it's like, if I'm doing 12,000 tickets in a night in New York, right? Like, that... There's a small group of people that can do that on the planet. You twelve thousand for your stand up in New York we when did you do radio big shows? twice. Wow. So that's like so for me, that's why I'm saying like uh, with the stand up is, is yeah, I know this is a boring question that you probably answered a million times, but what the oh. fuck does that feel like? That's such like it's awesome. compared to doing comedy for fifty people where you can look them all in the eyes, there's gotta Let be something you. about twelve thousand. Let me show you the fucking coolest thing. Imagine I, imagine mind. you grew up. In New York, and like you're looking at Radio City every single fucking week when you're walking up, yeah. and then you get to do look at this shit. This That's shit. how I felt watching Billy Joel sell out Madison Square Garden. This is the elevator comes from under the stage. Yeah, that's clear. Oh, wow. Does it feel different, or wow. does it feel kind of like just good either way? I mean. That moment when you're coming out. Oh, that's fire! <laughs> well, a, you're like fucking <laughs> Axl Rose, dude. Right? That shit, wow, bro. That was. Fucking, what's your next special? Cool thing. It's I mean, I mean, it's just coming put the out. first one out. No, no it's no, not no, out no, yet. First one, but no, I don't no, know no, when this is coming out. Put it on oh, because you guys were all Say talking like you had already spot. seen it. <laughs> I was no. thinking, I'm like, damn, I fucking didn't watch the special, but I thought you were saying it was already out. No, I'm no, just no he dropped clips. He dropped clips. No, but what are you doing the the live one? I gotta write some new jokes. That take it takes you like at least a year to come up with another special, right? That's the thing with me is like I'm not like I don't I'm not one of these guys who's just gonna tour nonstop. Which is fine if that's your business, do your thing. But like for me, like I need time to like grow. Mm. Like shit has changed in my life. Like I got married. You know what I mean? Like I'm probably gonna start trying to have a kid. Like I want to go through that growth, and I want the the, the material to also grow in that way. That so was, I need an hour. I need like a, a year probably to develop. See, see that hour. trips me out when I'm watching a, a podcast and I hear a comedian talking about all these dates he's about to do in Iowa and Ohio or whatever. Yeah, and. Because to me, even though I'm, I'm sure that that's good, it, it helps him make money, it's good for growing his fan base, everything, but to me, having to be away from my family and on the road and having to take my eye off the ball in terms of every other thing that I'm doing, it just seems like it would be hard for me to but justify think, being on the road Think that about much. this. We do all this so we could do the road. It's real shit. That's what we want. We like Comics would be in movies so that they could do the road. Hmm. Like a comic would go become an actor. They don't even care about acting so that they could go tour because we had to be an actor in order for enough people to see us so that we but could go do the thing we like. it's kind of an old school like. mentality, That's right? the old one. Yeah, now yeah. we could podcast, but that's why we podcast. Mm. It's like, how do we build up this audience so we can go tour? The thing we love the most is touring. The right. thing we love the most is the stand-up. So I don't know. I think that's why people are kind of like, some people were a little bit shocked when I, when I bought back the special and it was just like, this is the most important thing. Like, this is the thing that I've worked the hardest on. Right. And it needs to look exactly the way that I want it to look and sound the way I want it Are to sound. Are you successful enough at this point that you feel like you can kind of afford to not give a fuck? Or do you feel like you're still, like, really working towards this not level? Not give a fuck about what? About, you know, stuff like people trying to cancel you, stuff like buying the special back. A lot of comedians who are in more of a try-hard stage in their life would not even consider buying it back or whatever, you know? like I'll tell you, I'll tell you it's, it's what you give a fuck about or who you give a fuck about. Mm. Like, for me, I don't care if there's a streaming logo behind me because the thing that validates me are the people coming out. Mm. Like... The Radio City shows, that to me, like when I sell out a show, I'm like, that makes me feel so much better than like NBC, mm. Netflix, you know, Amazon. Like I, I don't care about that, but there are people that they don't think they made it unless they get signed by Universal or they get signed by this label. It's like, if the people are coming out, that's all I need. You made it. That is my validation. Mm. I don't, if I go do a movie, when we did that movie, yeah. if no actor knew who I was, but all the dudes like moving shit did, <laughs> I made it. I go a lot of places and nobody knows me besides the security. Exactly. But that's <laughs> if I go to TSA and I'm good, yeah. then, I, then I'm, I'm straight. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, so it's like I don't need to be an industry darling. I don't want to get invited to the parties. I don't give a fuck about the party. I got a wife. Mm. You know what I mean? I'm good. I care about the people as long as the thing is that I make is going to the people. I think I think I think that's why when you, when you do your crowd work, I think that's why it's so respected and never get taken out of offense. Hmm. Uh, because that statement alone, where you were just saying that you generally care about the art, a lot of people don't. You feel me? A lot of yeah. people don't. You can see it on a lot of comedians. But you, when you sit there and make fun of people like 
like I seen the crazy one where, where you made fun of the criminal dude and and oh, like, yeah, and then shit like that and and he, he definitely knew. killed somebody else. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> definitely killed somebody. But, but, uh, that that was wild. Or when you made fun of like the the old lady that was getting fucked by black guys and while her husband oh, yeah, went yeah. to the thing <laughs> and she was sitting there laughing, old ass lady. Yeah. Everybody around her is young or maybe around your age because that's your yeah, crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's sitting there laughing. It's like. Damn, this fool built up their trust. Yeah. Their love. Yeah. And, and 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 I think that's and that's a point of a comedian where they're allowed to tell you their sensitive stories. Yeah. Or even with like the gay couples, when you make fun of the gay couples and yeah. shit like that. They were so open to you, they're like, make fun of us. Yeah. And and then a lot of the people you do get sitting in the front, they said, We bought these seats so we so could get made fun it. of. And I'm like, what the fuck? He literally cause 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 she go to a lot of comics, so like that's fucking, what that's what Tiger didn't do. <laughs> I'll be honest with you like yeah. Tiger didn't build up enough trust with the Latino community to do that song mm. and I think that's why that, there's that's, a pushback that's, that's, that's a valid but point but YG did yeah. right mm. so it's like if it, and it really comes down to that like at least for me like I'm very curious like, like I don't know if you guys noticed today but like I want to know what your life is like I want to know the gang shit and then because of that curiosity I'll pick up on like little nuances and then I'll be able to tease you <laughs> about those specific things teasing him is, that's is important that's how I tease you yeah. about Joe Budden there it is there you, <laughs> you know what I'm saying and then and then you appreciate it because it's not like you're teasing me with some like hacky like white guy joke because like, you smell like a wet dog or like whatever like, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what we say to Adam <laughs> you know, but you know what I'm saying like you know I, you know a more specific thing about Adam that you can make fun of him. Besides, we know too much. You should have seen this roast yesterday. It got a little too personal. Yeah, it got a little too personal. But those are the best. But anyway, yeah. I guess what, people appreciate, at least I've, I've experienced, and here I am just like this white dude that's making fun of all these different people, all these different cultures, but like I'm curious enough to know something specific in the culture, and then they go, instead of feeling like they're being made fun of, they weirdly feel like they're being represented. Yeah. And they're like, oh shit, that is fucking true. How the hell does that guy know this? Like, and, then, and then I think even when you um, when you make fun of like the, the different races and, and like the Indians and blacks and Latinos, I'm like, fuck this fool. I mean, when he's stating facts and making fun of you about it, you kind of don't know what to say. You're just like, oh, what the fuck? And those communities share it the most. That's what I realized. Yeah. It's like I would put these things out and they would share it around like the Bosnians. I had like some joke about Bo the whole Bosnian community. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You made fun it. of them trying to kill, um, um, was the actor's name in that movie? Oh, yeah. Liam Neeson. Or yeah, Liam like Neeson. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Leave his family alone, bro. Like, yeah. but, but if you're going to go to a comedy show, you should be going in there almost kind of like hoping that you get made fun of if anything you shouldn't be looking that as the worst possible scenario because yeah. I remember watching the Dave Chappelle thing and there was two women with fucking purple them? purple they hair the they were one. not laughing yeah. at all the whole time and that made it so much funnier yeah. to me I'm not watching Dave Chappelle I am trying to see those women because yeah. I want to see if they're going to crack a smile well see so you'll be more surprised because there is people that go there thinking that you're just going to make fun of politicians and yeah. your marriage <laughs> the whole time and and that you was a problem the and, crowd. <laughs> and for, that was a problem when I, when I first did a couple of I'm not married. Comedy's an older crowd. Comedy, there's... You're going to develop your younger yeah, yeah, crowd yeah, is yeah, what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? But when people that relate yeah. to you are going to come watch you and they're going to be maybe around your age and then maybe you're going to have old heads that also fuck with you. Like, yeah, yeah. You're going to develop your shit. Don't feel like you're too young for it because there are kids that are your age waiting to watch your Yeah, that was shit. definitely... When I made a couple old jokes... At, at my first stand up ever, I like, <laughs> like certain people laughed, but certain people were, wasn't fucking with it. They were just yeah. like, dude, like they were just but not, the, they were not a fan it, of the old jokes. It's two different things though, too. The LGBTQIA plus couple in I didn't front, even know it was IA. If they're not laughing, it might just be because they actually think the joke is lame as fuck. Which also consider if you are trans or whatever, you know every fucking trans joke, yeah. right? You might, and I think that that was definitely one thing I saw people saying on Twitter when the Dave Chappelle shit came out is that people were saying like these jokes are old as fuck. Like these are yeah. jokes that somebody could have made four fucking They're years new to ago, the straight whatever. Dude yeah. Who's never known anything yeah, exactly, about trans yeah. people, but the trans community is like, yeah, we've been made fun of like this for our whole lives. So yeah. if you found something real specific about them, exactly, yeah. then maybe, you know, they would crack up. But that's kind of what it is with comedy too, is I feel like specificity. You, you can't wins. be so nuanced and specific in your jokes and expect to make twelve thousand people laugh. You kinda have to appeal to a common denominator, right? That's inter that's an interesting question. I think what you can do is like that's yeah, that I think you can. It just takes skill and discipline mm. because it's easy once you get a platform to just kind of like tell stories from the platform. Mm. 
And for me, I do a live show for the person who might have never listened to the podcast or it's their first time coming to see me. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. for me, the most important thing is a live show. It's got to be the best show you've ever seen. Mm. It's got to be the best show. Like the video I showed you, just that elevator probably cost tens of thousands of dollars to use. Mm. But you've never seen nobody come up in a fucking elevator in comedy. That's worth it, though. Right? Because you're going to talk about it. Like the, the set already has to be hilarious. What are you doing outside of that? Mm. How are you making it a show? So for me, yeah, I think you can get specific. And it's okay if some people don't get the joke. Mm. That's okay. It's okay if 20% of the people are like, what the fuck is going on? If the other 80% are fucking crying. If I do some specific Mexican shit and only the Mexicans are kind of getting it in the audience, that might be their favorite fucking joke. And then a few people kind of like aware of it, get it. And there might be some white people completely lost. That's okay too. Because those white people can be like, what the fuck? What the fuck does that? What is elote? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what the fuck? We right? don't know. No, I still don't know. No, that's valid. That's valid. Um, when you write jokes, do you ever think about your family? I think about my wife a little you're bit right, more that's, now. That's, that's, that, that, fuck, that's where I was going. Like, like when you were making these abortions over here, like, well, maybe... For, let me see what my <laughs> wife thinks about Oh, no, this. no, no. Not like that. I only think if I'm telling a story about my wife or something like that. Oh, okay, like, okay. I, I, mean, I mean, when you give those crazy perspectives oh, that you no. have. I mean, I talk about my mom like crazy on a podcast. Like, I'm just... Yeah, I talk about... Adam my, does too. Yeah. He said AD ran through her. Wait, really? True story. He did really? not fuck my mom, but... <laughs> No, you, you want to know what? He got, know? Adam got pussy, bro. We was going to have his mom on the podcast. And then his mom didn't pull up. You my mom that? was the one who was pussy, yeah. Because that was my big my this big was idea was fire. I was going to have him this is gonna be bring fire. up the porn shit to my mom for the first Who's time. Who's never spoken about it on air. How does she feel about it? Well, she, she found out about it because I think Josh and my sister snitched on me. <laughs> and they fucking, she, she was Wait, like, I don't like this idea. Which I think they were right because I think it actually would have bummed her out, and then it probably would have soured the whole fucking thing. We would have made thing. it fun. Bro. I think you would have made it fun too. Yeah. But my mom, she's kind of anxious. She got cold feet. His dad thinks I'm Gucci man. No, <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> everybody reaction. <laughs> have you told him he's not? My dad doesn't know a lot of rappers. Yeah. So yeah, I think yeah, he, yeah. when he said that, he sincerely actually thought that he was looking at footage of me doing an interview with Gucci Man. Yeah. And it was AD. How does he know Gucci though? I don't know. Dude, that's what I don't know. Now, you know his dad is like, you know, some shit. Yeah, we he got pardoned, bro. Illuminati, like, he, yeah. Uh, not Illuminati, but like, you, you, you know. My dad doesn't know a lot of famous black dudes. He was talking about seeing Floyd Mayweather at a at a high school basketball oh, game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That also likes going to random basketball games. Just the way games. that he was talking about it was so game. crazy. <laughs> he was collecting for Epstein's Island, bro. He was doing, <laughs> that's what he was doing, man. That you don't go to the girls' games. Was, bro. He was going to that fucking basketball. Now. Yes, this guy's connected, bro. But it's You're such a, homeless. It's homeless. such a good yeah. feeling to have these conversations and know that millions of people are going to see it and that my dad is never going to find out about it because he's so cut off from the world. He knows. He don't need to find out. Yeah. <laughs> he, knows. he knows. He collects girls for Epstein, <laughs> dude, and sends them to that island. And that's why he got off. Phil, no, I'm maybe, so sorry. Maybe yeah. boys because he goes to the high school basketball game. Exactly. He's interested in their athleticism. <laughs> so are the As other far people. as I know, my dad has had a 100% molestation free life. What does that mean? He hasn't molested any of these basketball players he's watching. That's good. Or me, even. <laughs> and I'm sure he was tempted because I look pretty good. You were never touched? No. Really? Then no. you're not white. I got survivor's guilt. <laughs> uh, no, but that is that is like kind of a... <laughs> you were never touched. You got face tats. Like white dudes with face tats always got diddled up. You thought that I got diddled? diddled. Yeah. Every white guy with face tattoos got touched. It's a diddler on the roof. That's his favorite yeah, book. Yeah, exactly. I never got diddled. You got diddled? No. no? I'm not white. <laughs> I'm telling you. It's not a black kid's game. So diddler, diddler on the Roof doing. is a hilarious reference, and there's some Jewish people that are watching this right now going, that was fucking hilarious. What, but what? Because yes. I, I said and that and most to people one time, but no I don't clue. know what was no, the Fiddler watched, on the Roof, it right? Was like, it was some, I think it was Batman pointing to somebody on the roof. Oh, the Riddler. Yeah, like, yeah but it was like a Diddler on the Roof. Well, but I, Fiddler on the Roof is a very famous play. Right. You didn't know that? No. That's hysterical. Josh, Josh yeah. is Jewish. Josh, Josh is Jewish, and he's like, yes. Yeah. I get it. Okay, wait a minute. But so for real, dude. What were we talking about? Your dad was like, yeah, you never touched by your dad or anybody else? <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe... So you just get the tattoos for for fun? Just for the hell of it. For black yeah. guys. But yeah. you don't have to. Like, he's got to get it for, like, the neighborhood so people think he's scary. No, you know I don't. I mean? he like, does. Tattoos. Yeah, yeah, that's but why also, he got that like, iPad tattoo. He beats with the iPad crips. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, you got to... It's part of it. You know what I mean? Like, you gotta, iPod, sorry. iPod. Yeah. He's got a, he's got he's a sidekick on him. What is that covering up, bro? That What is that? There's no way. 
No, that when was you got like, that, I, were you like, yo, this technology? You don't have any gangs worked out on you at all. I was literally like. I'm about music. This is the best way I can represent it. Not knowing iPods wasn't could, gonna be could here. You clean your window. <laughs> can I ask you, please try to get him to admit that he used to be a stripper? <laughs> Did you strip? No. This is a new accusation. It's it's kind of oh, like bro. me being you see an how Illuminati. We're off his dad There's no enough? evidence yeah. for it, but it's being discussed. You're the diddler. Mm, stri- <laughs> strippers yo, yo, aren't diddlers. Nothing happened to you. No sexual trauma. Maybe we could talk about this more and maybe I could dig some up in the back of my mind. Maybe yeah, there yeah. is some diddling that happened, but yeah, yeah. no, I, I don't, don't put that on your father. <laughs> no, <laughs> like I, it's not necessarily totally your sure dad. It it's not your dad. You were, since you've been hanging with Gucci, man, yeah. <laughs> you changed Grand Mason. Yeah. <laughs> also, that name is crazy. My dad, <laughs> I broke Grand Mason. Mason, bro. You know what's the funniest thing my dad said to me in recent years is he saw me uh, picking up my gun and he goes, yeah, I'm sure. Good you're thing need- you didn't have that when you were seven. <laughs> Is that what he said? <laughs> that what he said? Put it down, He goes. He goes. Yeah, I'm sure you're gonna need that in this neighborhood. <laughs> what? Did you say something funnier? <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> he got you. <laughs> yeah, it's all good, Adam. Come on, bro. Oh it's all my good. God. I had to take the test. It's all good. You want to oh, test? There's no God. white guy with face tats that hasn't been touched, bro. <laughs> I'm telling it's the it's just the rules, bro. He was like, Did you hey, meet Epstein before? Uh, no. He, he met Michael Jackson. It's facts. He might have. <laughs> bro, I'm telling you, it's part of it. Your dad was pardoned. But not for diddling. No, he never would get caught no, for no, that. No, no. He was too good. That would be too good. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He's a grand mason, bro. He's not the mason. He's, he's the grand one. He's the best one that exists. That was the craziest last name ever. Grand yeah. Mason. Bro, because the conspiracy theorist is hitting me up like, you know what's going on. Yes, dude. And he I was parted. like, did you, they think did, I'm part of it you now. You watch him grill me about it? No. They loved it. I didn't understand. I didn't understand when, when they were like, his dad got part. I was like, what the fuck does that mean? So I, I had to like look up the whole shit. I mean, obviously I understood it after. And I was but like, isn't that crazy that you can just say you didn't do that? Like after you've been convicted of something, yeah. you're like, no, you didn't. No, <laughs> That's nuts, no, dude. like trial, no, just nothing. It it's just, oh, I'm the most pro- powerful dude in the world. Boom, you're good. Yeah. How close was yeah, your dad yeah, yeah. and the president? They diddled. Did they? No. Nah. Do you think he knew so. about Monica sucking it up? No, I don't think he was really involved in his he inner her. circle nah. at that point. <laughs> <laughs> He's the one that brought it. She he snitched it. on him. He was like, this is my favorite from the high schools <laughs> yeah. of all time. I'm going to bring no, it to you, Bill. I've been we, grooming this one for a while, Bill. <laughs> we talked about that off camera, but that was a real thing. Is that I like was... 12 having a conversation with my dad about like what was happening to Bill Clinton when he's getting in trouble for getting was his he dick so, sucked. Was Did he, he like, cry? Yeah, like how is it? No, he just made it clear that like that's not okay. Can you just okay. break down the conversation? Was he like, you're going to do this do thing? It, he basically he just told me. to get his dick Why sucked? Did he, yeah. do it, he, he, he said, supposed to be the president. He said, I'm infinitely less well known or, or powerful than Bill Clinton yeah. and I would never do that because... A, I think it's wrong for me to cheat on your mom. And then B, because when you're in a position of power like that, you can't just do these kind of things. Did he explain a blowjob or did he just show you? I think I knew about... (laughs) 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 Dad, Dad, I'm not getting it. Show me what you did. (laughs) Zip, zip, baby. (laughs) That was like, don't tell mom, but I would never do this to anybody else. (laughs) Let me show you how his Grand Mason suck. <laughs> what, if, what if next week's podcast is me just coming clean about being diddled? Yo, it's all and good, Andrew, Andrew Schultz pushed it to the surface. Pause. And I still, here I am. I'm ready to spill my guts. Surface. Pause. I still wouldn't hug you. you I'd be like, man. man if I had been better. molested? I'd be like this. I hope you feel better, man. All right, you better not start being. You better not start acting different to me now that better, that's out of the open. <laughs> Would you act different to Hassan Campbell? What you mean? He got diddled by fucking uh, Africa Bambata. I don't know that man. But you would act differently to him, knowing that he had some childhood trauma take place? No, you, because you want to get in the geese and wrestle each other. Yeah. You're trying to, like, you know, act out that trauma. I want to lock him in the locker room. Yeah. And chase him around. But that's you. <laughs> you know, it comes from that powerlessness. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then, it's so when Bill Clinton man. got his dick stuck at the Oval Office, it was really that much of a big story. Yeah. It was, like, the it. only story I mean, for I a long time. I, like, if I was Bro. A, if I didn't you're an embryo. Imagine you're trying to impress a woman. You can bring her anywhere. You come to the Oval Office. No, she bitch. was an intern. She was already working in the How Oval old office. was she? Like early 20s. 20s. Yeah, you you want to know something crazy, crazy? You were there too? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> 
got I wish, you got no, dead up too. No, people, Did his dad bring you? Exactly. I got the, I got the White House tour. No, no. They they hated Literally. her. Literally, they hated her. Like you know how right now we yeah, got the Me yeah. Too movement, and everything like that. She was the villain. How dare she break up the family? Like this whole thing where like women are victims and women are taking advantage yeah, that, of the power situation. Really. That did not exist. Hillary Clinton was banging on this bitch. Like, it was crazy. Ruined her life. But he fucked her with a cigar, too. Fire? Yeah. What do you Fuck. mean? Like, he, like, stuck the cigar he in her vagina? took a cigar. I think yeah. he took the plastic off it, and he fucking... And that's, that's why, yeah. at a certain point, Bill Clinton put out a statement and said, I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Yeah. See, and Which leaves it up to debate. Is a blowjob a sexual relation? I, was, I think we mostly definitely. could agree, yes. I was watching it yesterday and, and figuring out. I was like, damn... Monica held it down, said it didn't happen, but her no, what's she her snitched on him in the no, first no, no, place. No, 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 what's her name? Linda Tripp. Linda Tripp. She recorded yeah. twenty hours of phone conversation. Oh, yes. I thought he said twenty hours of a blowjob. I'm like, damn, no, that bitch no, got a hell of a blowjob. Twenty yeah. hours. <laughs> of he was phone, edging. Yeah. Phone or the worst blowjob ever. Mm. And then fucking Hillary's mom brought them to dress. Yeah. Hillary's mom did that? Yes, I seen it. What's wrong with these people? Yo, I mean, like, I mean with you, the front of you, 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 yeah. you tell us, bro. I wasn't really around for that. I was just holding signs on the block you in went Nashville, to New Hampshire you went in 92. Do right? you know no. what's weird? That I went happened. to the White House. How old were you when that happened? I don't know, 13? What was so, it, like 97, 98? Just when you exited diddling age, Clinton, <laughs> Clinton had to start fucking interns. And I'm wondering. If you aged out, it like killed if my were, aspirations to be a White House intern. No, I was he, like, I'm gonna get fucked with a cigar. You were satisfying him until you got too old. Bill Clinton. And then he need, yeah, then uh, he needed new. That's money. why you I didn't realize that was part of this. Exactly. You might have been the thing that kept him in line in Arkansas. Your dad was sending you to like sleep away camp. But then or he's fucking a hot intern. I think <laughs> he's doing yeah. better afterwards. Well, give yourself some credit. I would rather <laughs> if <laughs> I'm Bill Clinton. <laughs> like, I would rather get some, get some top for Monica Lewinsky than me. You think? I don't know. I'm not trained for this. Don't you think women have a deeper throat than you? Than the average man? <laughs> no, no, but not or when you've been dead your whole life that you practice. I've yeah. been training for you. Yeah. <laughs> was, your dad, was your dad mad at you? You couldn't do it anymore? That I had to stop giving head. <laughs> yeah, he was furious, dude. Come on, man. I'm t what are we covering up with these tattoos, Adam? Oh, the diddling tattoos that Tell I had us about previously. Your childhood. Yeah. We're gonna reverse this interview. So, how was your childhood? Do you know your parents? That's the intro clip. Yeah, 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 you yeah, gonna yeah. start crying? I know. It's all good, dude. I'm ready to come clean. But it's all good, I'm man. Air these grand masons out. I think that we should. This is this is gonna come full circle because mm. now we can protect the youth. You know. Mm. This is good. If a white guy has face tattoos, there's a 99% chance that he's he's been. But to be molested fair, have you seen Bill Clinton in recent years? Yeah, he's. he's Doesn't he's, look like he's going to be doing a lot of diddling. But he didn't look as good as he looked back then. Is that what you're saying? No, he looked that it, very it robust and strong and athletic yeah. back then. Yeah, you found it was it wasn't that bad, right? Oh, so you're no. that fucking yeah. about yeah. 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 <laughs> 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 yeah. He's not this old decrepit guy like he is now. Hey, and. Let, further, <laughs> let's add to this conspiracy theory. Yeah, I voted for Hillary Clinton. Oh, oh, that's just internalized hatred. Exactly, I was internalizing yeah. my hatred about yeah. the diddling. Yeah, she it's all knew. good. Wait, after when all that shit happened, they were still married. Yep, she yeah. stood by him. She had his back. Oh, and, and blamed it on the throat goat. She don't. She didn't really drop statements about it, as far as I recall. She like pretty much stayed quiet and disappeared for a few months. I ain't gonna lie. She looked mad. Though. I seen a picture of her looking at him when he was she doing his statement. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. She was tight. And imagine mm. the whole world knowing that you got your dick sucked at the Oval so, Office and, and your bitch is still with you. Chris Rock had the craziest joke. Remember Chris Rock's joke where what? she he was like about Hillary Clinton. He was like, "This is how wild comedy was." He was, he goes, uh, "She's the first lady." She should be the first one on her knees sucking his dick. <laughs> said that about. Imagine someone said that about Michelle Obama. Imagine, yeah, imagine I'm, I'm, a comedian like came out and said that about Michelle Obama. Would that not be crazy? Yeah, I don't think that would be cool. Right? <laughs> they say he's punching down. But isn't that crazy? Right. Like that. I mean, this is the first lady he was talking about. All right, th this is one topic aside from my apparent molestation that <laughs> yeah. has risen to the surface throughout this conversation that I wanted to bring Hope up. Hope you feel better. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. I appreciate that. When I was doing Ryan Long's podcast in New York, shout out to Ryan. He asked me about six nine at some length, and yes. I made it clear that I didn't like him, and they essentially been blackballed by the hip hop world because of the snitching and everything. Right. And once I kind of really broke down the whole snitching thing to him, he said. 
That sounds like honestly almost the exact same thing as the comedy world where somebody will cancel somebody on the internet and then want to just come to the comedy club and just be all still on good terms with everybody after he just spent his weekend trying to destroy somebody's career and get their sponsors to leave him or whatever. Would you say that that's accurate? I think depending on how powerful that person is, the comics won't really say shit because they think mm. that like it could affect their career. But like, yeah, I don't know. I don't mind having those conversations. I don't like it when comics trash other comics, you know, if, especially if those comics are good mm. and they're like going through something that's unnecessary. I don't like that at all. But yeah, I think a lot of comics are like scared or, or they, they see that person as, you know, presenting opportunities to them. Mm. And, uh, Everybody, you know, wants to survive. There is a lot of that in the comedy world, huh? Where people sort of I think that's every hold back on shitting on someone because of that. I think it's every world. It's like where you go, okay, I could potentially get in this movie or I could potentially that's why I like what we do, is because it's actual independence and independence means you don't get to give a fuck. Mm. Independence gets means you get to actually share your opinion and you're not worried if you're not gonna be in a film, or you're not worried if you're not gonna make this TV show. Like I care about the things I'm creating and I'm creating them. But when you go through something like buying your special back, mm -hmm. I mean, like the reason why you were going so hard on YouTube in the first place at a certain point was kind of because you couldn't get a Netflix no special, right? Yeah. So you're like, I'm going to build my own independent thing. Does, does something like having them want to remove some of your edge of your jokes, does that make you kind of be like, well, fuck this shit. Maybe I should just stay completely independent. Yeah. And most importantly, it's like, why would I change the thing that's working? Right. Like I put my comedy out authentically. And people fuck with it. Mm. So I'm not going to change that because then I'm letting all those people down and rock so hard for me. You know what I mean? If somebody comes to you tomorrow and is like, I want to give you a sitcom. We're going to work on the sitcom together or some, some kind of TV thing, some corporate thing. Do you see that as like a big opportunity or do you consider that shit to be probably like cursed from the beginning because yeah, you just don't think you could fit in that box? It just depends on the story. Like I, at the end of the day, I just love stories. So if it's a cool, compelling story, like I'm going to make some movies. Mm. Like I want to like write a movie and I want to make a movie. I just like that journey. I like that experience. So I'll do that. But like, no, I'm not, I'm not against it. But like in order to get me to be in something, like, I got to love it. Like, right. it's... Because you're already making enough acting. money doing your own thing that... And uh, I don't like acting that much. Right. So it's like, once I got away from this idea that, like, a comedian must go then be an actor, must go then do this thing. Like, once right. I removed myself from that, I guess, matrix, if you will. Right. I was kind of free to just do the things that gave me joy. So, like, it gave me joy to go do White Man Can't Jump with Duno because... I watched that movie growing up, and mm. it was impactful to me. Like, I remember seeing it with my boy, and then the next day going to Hoop. Like, it was just the coolest movie I ever saw. Right. So, to be in that, that was great. I did another movie with fucking, uh, where I just played a small role, but like Eddie Murphy's in it. And that's the reason why I do stand up. So, I was like, I'll do those things because I get to basically check those off, like be in these iconic pieces. But like, an average acting role that I get offered quite a bit, I say no. Hmm. And I, I have to be like completely available, free. And then I have to love it, and then maybe I'll do it. Because it just doesn't give me as much joy as talking shit on a podcast or going to do stand-up. Because somebody was talking to me and Lena and about... And you don't make as much money. Right. Somebody was talking to me and Lena about the TV show thing, and I'm like, do you realize how big of a pay cut it's going to be so for good. us on an hourly basis? And it might never come out. Like you might, yeah, we, you might, we might put 100 hours into working on this, Fuck. and then nothing might ever Bro, happen. I just got a Disney check for $24. I was like... Like, what's the point? For what? For a role. $24? Yeah. And this is something that's not out yet, or is this from Dave? It's a royalty check. Yeah. It's a royalty check, so it goes down every single time. It's because you're only on one episode. Two. <laughs> 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 no, you, no, yeah, but I definitely feel like you got to love what, like exactly what you do. I did when we did that, the the White Mike Cat Jump shit, I was like, I didn't expect it, but then I got the costume, I'm like, oh, I'm just going to be there. Yeah. I'm like, I definitely got to be there early. Yeah, like I still if, waited like five if, hours if, until they, if all until the work they, is done for you. Then I could see it being kind of appealing. But in terms of like developing something and having to really be at the whim of these corporations, that seems well. Precarious. That's that gets that gets hard. That's why you need to get all the. I don't want to call it like I call it leverage. You mm. need to get all the leverage you possibly can. Like having this is leverage, right? Mm. Because they got to pay you enough money to not do this, right? Like. A lot of times you go into like, for example, like acting or even like with like rap and like he's like, okay, I'm five thousand dollars a show. Why are you five thousand dollars a show? 
Some people just go, that's what I get. No, no, you have to make 5000 a show first before you can be 5000 a show. Real shit. Now, if you're doing this and making, let's say you're making fucking $100,000 a year. It doesn't a matter. A million a month. Okay, let's say you're making a million dollars a month. <laughs> we need let's a razor say, on this motherfucker. Right? <laughs> careful, that's crazy. Careful with them numbers. <laughs> never, never. I don't know where that came from. But let's say you're making a million a month. <laughs> Josh is shaking his head. <laughs> Everybody want to raise. Just right? marketing. That nigga, that nigga said it. That's marketing. But now like that's wrestler. your rate to get you the fuck out of here. Mm. They got to pay you at least a million and one dollars a month for you to not work here for a month. Right? So you get this new rate yourself. I like that. I think that's cool. I think, I think that once we realize that like only boomers give a fuck about like brand names, like the youth watches YouTube. They watch Instagram. They watch TikTok. Shit. They don't need you to be on a Netflix or an NBC or an MTV. Like that, that shit means nothing to them. They like content creators that either entertain them, make them laugh, etc. So once you realize that they're the ones that are moving the needle, you don't have to appeal and take a pay cut for these brands. Mm. And that's why I realized when I saw them try to bring TRL back. Is like oh, yeah, TRL no was the biggest thing when I was Huge. a kid. Every single kid my age, you would come home from school and you watch TRL, even if you didn't really like the music on it, whatever. Yeah. They tried to bring TRL back and nobody gave a fuck because this young generation doesn't have a memory of that. And also the thing about it is TRL used to be able to get NSYNC and the Backstreet Boys and Eminem to pull up because it was like the only place where you could oh, really man. get a shitload of attention yeah. and everybody was watching it. And when I'm watching... TRL when they tried to bring it back, I'm seeing them get, you know, Smoke Perk. They're not getting Cardi B. Right, you know? Right, no shots right. to Smoke Perk because he was he was kind of cracking at that time. But, you know, they can't get the number one A-list people it's because it it's not worth it to Cardi yeah. B. Why the fuck does she care? Nobody's seeing this. That was like yeah. 106 and Park for us. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, I remember 106 and Park. She was born. I wish we had it was, too. How's it yeah, sure. <laughs> fuck, fuck, has a comic ever stole your shit? Has a comic ever stole my jokes? Yeah. Yo, steel is wild. Okay, okay, okay. But have 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 fucking recycled. No, 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 no. I guess what I mean is like, have have I ever had a piece and then somebody else ended up having something that was similar? Yes. I don't want to put intention on them. Intention mm. is that's a crazy thing to be like, yeah, this person did. Mm. There are people who have similar ideas. That thing does happen in comedy. Yeah. You know? So like and now that we're at, so many more people are putting their comedy out on Instagram, YouTube, like there's so many more avenues to watch comedy. It would be impossible Duno. for you to know about all of them. Exactly. Yeah. And you're going to see more similarities between things, mm -hmm. right? In a very similar way that like you see with like memes, like multiple memes will pop up that are kind of a similar, similar idea, yeah. right? And, and in the meme world, there's like no pressure to not rip off. Memes. That's, at least in comedy, it's in like comedy, a sin. There's this this sense of integrity, yes. you know that no, you yeah, can't yeah, like like, extend to like fucking else. being super authentic. Because for was it on your part where Joe Rogan said that he kind of felt bad after he did the Carlos Mencia shit? Yeah, I think he did. Well, he we talked about yeah, my yeah, pod. I forget yeah. exactly what he was saying, but like maybe going about it the way he went about it. Yeah, like, yeah, because he would never do that now. Being yeah, that, that shit was crazy when when you're the when you're at a different. yeah when you're at a comic show and then another comic comes up there and just airs you the fuck yeah. out. It's like, <laughs> but what Carlos was doing for a while was you know it was really hurting comics' careers, right? Because like yeah, yeah. it takes so long to build up these jokes. And then if he's going out there and doing them and doing them on like specials and that kind of stuff, now those other comics that need that to make a living mm -hmm. can't do them because people have heard him because he's such a big comic. So I think I think what Joe is saying is basically there's another way that I could have approached him about it. Uh, yeah, it but maybe that wasn't the best way. But at the same time, it's like I don't think he's mad about where he is in life. <laughs> no, you know what I mean. Like everything happens, and you are where you are, so you have to deal with that. You know, like. I think that, yeah, there's probably things, I don't know. I mean, he said it on the podcast. Joe Rogan is at the ultimate place that you could be at in life to a certain extent because, like, I remember he was giving the example of uh, Kevin Smith trying to get him to fly out to be in one of his movies, right? Like, mm -hmm. he's just going to have to fly out for a couple days over a weekend or whatever, and Joe's just like, nah, man, sorry. Like, I fuck with you and everything, but I, I just can't do it. And he's like, no, man, like, please, and, like, try to convince him. He's like, I'm just not doing it. He's like, I'm just saying no to everything right now because he's just so happy being with his family, doing his podcast, getting to do whatever the fuck he wants to do, that there's like almost nothing that could tempt him to leave that. And when you look at all of us, we could all think of tons of shit that people could suggest that we would hop on a plane tomorrow to go do if it was a good enough opportunity. You porn, know? More porn? More yeah. porn, for instance, yeah. I mean, when he came and did our podcast, I'm, I'm just making an assumption here. 
it probably costs him tens of thousands of dollars. Because he flies private? I imagine he's flying <laughs> private. He's flying multiple people there. He's flying security. He's taking a day off probably from doing his podcast. Yep. He's putting everybody up in hotels. Like, that's how, I don't know. He's just the man. He's the most damn, generous that's, fucker. Damn, I, he's the I've realest never, motherfucker. Low key, right? You low can't key. say nothing bad about Joe. Although, Although, shit. To be fair. Yeah, that's boss. It, when you see it like that, you're like, Oh, to be shit. fair, if Joe Rogan spent thirty grand to get there that day, that would probably be like me going to the store and buying a six-piece chicken McNugget. I think probably <laughs> minimum fifty thousand. You think minimum? If between like, remember he has security Everybody. that he flies around. It's like everything. It's, he's feeding all these guys. They're there in New York City at a very nice hotel, probably with multiple people. He's got to get rooms for like fifty grand is, at a certain point. When you're living a certain way is not that much. I'm, yeah, I'm, like ten bucks. I was him. talking to Dan Bilzerian about this poker tournament that yeah. he like didn't go to or whatever because his sponsor was supposed to pay for his travel. They didn't realize the travel was going to be a hundred and seventy thousand dollars on his private jet. Yeah, and so that became a very big issue. And I'm just thinking like, bro, like. Uh, like there are almost no poker tournaments in the world that are $170,000 to enter. So it's like anything that he does, he kind of has to look at it in comparison to this outrageous cost. But his attitude is I didn't buy this fucking jet to not use it. Yeah. And if I he couldn't got even believe club. I'm having that conversation with him. At a yeah. certain point. Like, this is crazy. Fuck it. F are you scared that you're ever going to get to a level like that? Not scared, but like, uh, I, I, like I don't, I don't desire to be the, um, the lightning rod for like the for news stories. I think basically what happened with Joe is he kind of like the media replaced Trump with him. Like wow, the media true. needs, you oh, know what I mean? Shit. Like once Trump was out and he was off Twitter and he wasn't making as many like waves, they needed a new person. Mm -hmm. And then it was Joe. And now it's Elon. Yeah. It's like a pretty similar trajectory for each. Hello, so Rich. Like, say again. Like, for, like hella rich dude and rich, shit. It's powerful, rich. powerful, huge yeah, yeah, yeah. audience. People perceive right them as leaning right, yeah. right? And it's like, Basically, what's that? No, no, it's because when he moves, it's like his, his whole body twerks. Oh, he gets oh, it. Always call him off with it. <laughs> no, but yeah, we're <laughs> but, any, but anyway, it's like I guess, I guess for that, I don't care as much. I don't think Joe cares. Like I don't think he wanted that. He was just having the conversations everybody was talking about. But like, I don't need that kind of notoriety. Like I said, like if the people know, that's enough for me. Mm. Like I think there are some people who are like I need everybody in the world to talk about me look about me like even now with the special like people are like do you want to hire a publicist and shit i'm like no i don't won't care about fucking articles in rolling stone like right. I, 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 <laughs> it doesn't mean anything to me i want to come a podcast i want to fucking bust balls talk shit like i can make people interested i can put out clips and i can create content to get people to start talking i, I don't need like to be an op-ed piece in the new york times you know because at a certain point once you're comfortable financially it becomes like a burden oh, okay well how hard do i want to chase being more famous because Bro, there's all kinds of things you could do to get more famous but then you look at somebody like nah. joe rogan and you're like well, do I want to be this fucking lightning rod that where yep. the the media is going to be sounding off on me every day and yep. treating me like the boogeyman? And your man? family, yeah. And your family got to go through it as well. That's the other thing that's crazy. It's not just you. It's like you're taking your family, you're taking like your kids into it. Your mm. kids got to deal with other kids bullying them at school. Damn, right? imagine like, that shit. Your that wife got to deal with it when she's going out. So, right. do you really want to put your family through all that? Now, your family got to ride with you because you know they also get a lot of nice things too. But right. it's one of those things you got to consider. And if you don't care about their validation, there's really no upside because the money don't change. Yeah. The money's the same, and now you just get all the criticism. Because if I had Joe Rogan's fame and his money, the money part to me wouldn't really matter that much because well, because yeah. what the fuck are you gonna do with that much money? Or think about like Pay this. Like, <laughs> <laughs> fuck. <laughs> think about it like this. You gotta pay me to deal with that shit. Right. Like. That's really what it comes down to, right? Like, is he making that much money? Well, every single day there's an article written about him. There's a YouTube video going up about him, shit all over. It's like he's earning that shit. And fame is a prison at a certain point. Like, you know, like yeah. if that's what I'm you saying. take it for granted that you could go jog around in the park. I mean, clearly you don't. But Joe Rogan going to jog <laughs> in the park. See that? Bro? It's a whole you thing. You take it for granted being molested. <laughs> you see that shit? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> no, but no, but, that, but there's certain <laughs> shit now that I that, that if that's what I'm asking, like, is there a point where it kind of fucking sucks that you can't do shit? Hell yeah. I'm like, fuck, Joe Rogan can't fucking go nowhere, dog. It doesn't hit he me goes that much. The fuck he wants. If yeah. for sure, yeah, he sometimes though, right? That much, but when I wanted to sneak off to the mall to buy my girl a present on a Saturday afternoon, and I have to take like 20 fucking photos in the mall just to get to the store to buy a present and get back to the car. <laughs> That's when it's like, oh fuck, like this sucks. Like this is actually not good at all. Yeah. How many people run up to you and ask, well, can you put me in a porn game? No. Just you. Just you. I ain't never asked, nigga. He's begging. Do you want to be in porn? Yeah, no. but he only wants to do gay porn. Oh, here I we don't, go. I don't deal with that word. Fuck, would you ever do porn? <laughs> no. <laughs> do you want to be a porn? Very man? few people like reach success and then start doing porn. I'm kind of an <laughs> aberration yeah. in that He's regard. He's fi- found a way to like normalize porn. Like I don't know. Like when you and, and Lena do it, I don't. It's not even porn to me. I don't want to like, watch them. Because you see yeah, that our relationship watch, is watch. normal in yeah. every other way that it's like, And I also oh, don't okay. feel like anybody's getting taken advantage of. And I think that's the tricky thing with like porn is like you're looking at the, the girl and you're like, oh, God, she don't really want to be doing this. All the girls that we show with, they want to be there. And they're having a good old time. Sure they do. Look, probably, Tom Duck, <laughs> probably sucking a few more dicks sure, on the way to the car. Sure they do. <laughs> For sure. All right. Well, we're well over our two hour mark. Uh, anything you want to ask? Anything you guys want to get off your chest to Andrew here? I fuck with y'all. I just want to say that I love what you guys are doing, and I and I genuinely do watch and enjoy. And and I got beef with uh, T Rail now. Oh, yeah. good. Because he's, he's not here, bro. He's a hater. Well, we he's only not have. Here. He no, wouldn't been here, but I'm we a T-Rail don't. Fan, we bro. only I have four you. mics. I was asking about the fucking arm and everything, <laughs> and I wanted to talk to him, and I even hit you. I was like, I I literally said all three. I said, I need Duno here. I need AD. You did and not I need specify. T-Rail. Oh my God, T Rail's never going to forget this. <laughs> Son, he, he I literally, you. He I literally like, said, hey, I need. You, you said, I want the boys there. I figured, well, we only show. got four mics. Show oh, he's not one of the boys? I'm not doing he's that. Not one of the boys, I'm yo. not doing multiple not one people on one mic. It wasn't Josh this time. Multiple people on no. one mic. Hey, it doesn't work. Four milk people was max. right. <laughs> milk was right. Bro, Milk was right. Milk hates T Rail now. Say what? Milk hates T Rail. Well, you were wrong about T Rail, Milk. But <laughs> yeah. well, you were right about Grand Mason. Joe Budden, you're right. There's okay. trouble you're on right, Fig. You're right, Joe Budden. There's trouble on Fig. Coach a vulture. <laughs> nah, but for real, we need T Rail next time. We need to get one more mic, bro. Okay. Let's Stop silencing black voices, man. Damn. Damn. You know what I mean? Like, come on, dude. And also, to be fair, he would fit perfectly on Duno's lap. See? Oh my God! You see, bro? You want everybody to get molested? <laughs> see? He's trying to Just normalize he, it, right? I know. I mean, he's he's, fucked he's up, been dude? through a lot. <laughs> Bill really Clinton, has, his man. dad. I know. It's just crazy, bro. It's okay. Uh, We're gonna get through it, dude. I'm gonna go to therapy right after this. I think that's a great idea. <laughs> I got some stuff. He gonna be through. screaming, them motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Don't figure it out. I thought they would never know. <laughs> Oh, wait till T-Rail see this. No, remember the the, the, the long the cry, devil. the loud cry? <laughs> <laughs> what was that from? That one black dude on a... What was it? He's on... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, the... Uh, yeah. inter- <laughs> intervention. Yeah. It was on intervention. Damn, bro, that fucking... That was a great meme. Real quick question. Um, Was Chris Rock wrong about the whole... Will oh Smith, Jada shit. Last question, the most boring question ever. No, that's. I think for like a comic, <laughs> I think that's really interesting. Was he wrong to do the joke? Yes. Not at all. And there's no. like more. There's more to that. Like when he was originally going to host the what was that shit the Oscars? Whatever. When the he Oscars. was yeah, when he was going to host the Oscars, not that time, but before the one where Jada was boycotting. Do you remember that? Mm. Because Jada boycotted because Will wasn't nominated for like concussion or some shit. Do you remember this? I never yes. heard of that. So they both boycotted. Oh, the yeah. The football movie. Was it the yeah, maybe it was that? Was it They made a football movie called Concussion? Well, it was about the well, doctor. He was a doctor. Yeah. Oh. So anyway, so like he wasn't nominated and then they boycotted. They're like the you know, Oscars are racist and blah blah blah. I think that's when Oscar So White came, came out and she kind of called out Chris for hosting that year. Like he was on some sellout shit. So now every time he's going to do an interview to promote the, uh, his new uh, special or anything like that, they're asking questions about him being a sellout. And it's like, I know you didn't fucking just ruin my whole shit, make me look bad because you're upset that your husband didn't get nominated. That's <laughs> not on me. Like, so they, I think he had a little beef. And then he dropped that fire joke about like Jada Pinkett Smith said that she's, she's boycotting the Oscars. That's me, like me boycotting Rihanna's panties. Right. Like you can't boycott something you weren't invited to. Mm. Like that, I thought that was fire. So they had beef, right? So, you know, maybe it was a little extra sauce on it. But yeah, make these well, jokes. Well, knowing that they had beef makes it 
me fuck with Will Moore for going up there doing nah, that. That shit is wild corny, bro, because yeah. he was laughing first and then saw she wasn't laughing. And That's then, the truth. And when you read Will Smith's biography and you really realize like laughing. where that <laughs> anger is coming from and how he felt like he was powerless yeah, to dude. stop his dad the from book, beating on his mom, it really, it'll make you feel you, yeah. for him, but it definitely won't make you feel like, oh yeah, that was some hard ass shit. No, it's like, I can sympathize with where you're coming from, Will Smith, yeah. but that was still some bitch made shit. Nah, she's a witch. And uh, <laughs> she is, she no is bitch. the problem in all of this. Will Smith has traditionally terrible taste in women, and you see that throughout the book as well. Yeah, she. Yeah, the, the you book is wild. Out. The book, Next. his book. Oh, the book of Mormon. Wild. It make you understand him way more. Uh, yeah, I've been through a lot like Adam. Well, he just oh, always yeah. been different. He just always felt powerless. Like his yeah. manhood was a check. He said even when he started rapping, they were like, "Oh, you're not even street enough to be a rapper." So like, because he's every not. aspect it was crazy. But then when you actually listen to his hits from back in the day, it's like, <laughs> yeah, they weren't gonna take you serious if you were making songs like this. Get jiggy you, with get it. Yeah, yeah, like every big song he had was just welcome to Miami. Corny. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> and I mean it was a lot of hits, but it's like, <laughs> yo, why don't people take me seriously? Why don't they think I'm a street rapper? <laughs> welcome to, to Miami. Miami. <laughs> Come on, bro. Like, nah, I hate that rich people complaining, bro. Like, yeah. like rich people complain about how difficult they have it when they have all the money for like therapy and all the things they can do. Like, don't share that pain with me, bro. Summer, Keep that summer, shit summer time. Nah, that shit went hard, bro. Summertime. No, that's a classic, bro. You kick back in on wind. <laughs> Come on, dude. Why is he? We used to that's shoot. That's his people. Abraham Lincoln thing. He always messes up songs. Wait, Abraham Lincoln did that? No, what? that's what I just call it. Oh, fuck. he reminds me of Lincoln. He doesn't feel like there's any kind of pressure on him to make sense on this Wait, podcast. Wait, why does it's he remind you theme. of Lincoln? Because he's liberated so many black uh, gang members. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I knew. I free I knew it was free. Cut <laughs> back. Free my boy. <laughs> Andrew Schultz. Thank oh, you guys. Thank AD. You okay, so. Do oh, know. Oh shit. Come on. Appreciate y'all. Thank Everybody you tune in to Flagrant and Brilliant Idiots and everything else and he buy has the going. Special. Buy the special. The Andrew Schultz.com. Check Don't out that the brown show. bag. Check out the community. No jumper. Coolest podcast in the world. Like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> Nojumper.com if you want to support. Bang bang.